Tried to get through Monday all on your own. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You tried to be tough. Thought you could hack it, but now you're here. Well, you know what I think of that? You want to know what I think of that? I think you're going to need a bit of help to get through Mondays. Now listen here, just because I like your face, I'm going to give you something that's going to help you out. That's right, J Core Life. Take a look. This is what I looked like before J Core Life. And now look at me. Do I look like I fear the Mondays? I'm not afraid of Mondays. I'm not. I'm not scared. Hello. Everybody, welcome back to a new edition here at J Core Live, your one and only J -Core. talk show here on Twitch. So once again, very, very, very sorry that we are starting ten minutes late because apparently my caster um, uh, didn't work as it should be uh, because I apparently um, the subscription ended like uh, yesterday or before yesterday. Um, so I resubscribed to the caster service, but for some reason it didn't accept uh, my stream for now. So uh, hopefully that will be uh, not issued. Uh, hopefully it will be. Jesus, what was the word for it? Uh, would be. Uh... Ah, Jesus, what is the <laughs> word? Um. Will we handle by next week? No. Some yeah. Let's hope that by next week uh, everything will be uh, sorted out. Yeah. Thanks, Ter. <laughs> Fixed. So yeah. Um. Today we are having a special show. Uh. We're not doing any uh, releases today because today we are going to have the much needed talk and also something that i need to uh get off my chest um it's something that i have been thinking about um doing for almost three months because now because I, I know <laughs> oh jesus somewhere deep down in my heart i still love you <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> I almost.
almost forgot <laughs> about that. Um, yeah, uh, for the people that does <laughs> know this, um, if you are a one year subscriber, you <laughs> hear that notification. But I haven't heard this sound for quite a long time. <laughs> So yeah, that is still something I do need to sort out. Um, so yeah, definitely, <laughs> Minion. Congratulations on your holy shit already one year. Damn, nice. Thanks. <laughs> um, so yeah, once again, I will uh, try to mention it's something that I really need to uh, get off my chest because um, there are some things uh, going on. Uh, Patreon people, they already had a little heads up at uh, a few months ago, two months I guess. But uh, now it's also time to um, to tell this to the uh, to the public, to you people about the past, present, and future of NDX JCL. As I mentioned before, there is no release today. Uh, next week there is going to be another release. So today, you people. You and me, we are going to have a little chit chat. But before we do that, let's do no, not uh, let's do a shout out. First, start with the really, really lovely people that resubscribe. DJ Evillian, four months. Woo! Hi, Evillian. <laughs> so, Evillian, are you also going to uh, the birthday of? Uh, Navigator? <laughs> I don't know if you just uh, saw something. There! 21 month subscription! Woo! Just go! 32 whole months! Oh my god! <laughs> yes, you'll be in the tent. Let's see. Air horn for Kenny Ford Super Year Jimmy! 26 month subscription! Yeah. Oh my god! And then Death Minion, thank you very much also for the gifted community sub. Uh, and another community sub and also for yourself. <laughs> the sound effects are a bit loud, mic is a bit quiet. Um, it can be that the mic is quiet. Maybe like this? The sounds are a little loud. Uh, maybe the sounds are loud because everything is softer. Because it should be... Normal. I didn't change the sound settings. Okay, better like it. So, okay, cool. I will say, oh no. Let's do also now a quick shout out to all you cheddars in here. Panna Leblin, I'm the Banana Tear, Tom CXR, DJ EV, and Jesco Hexaxon, Rio TDF, Colesbart, Super Rio Jimmy, Mint, and Ik Ga Hard. So yeah. I'll say, uh, enjoy today's show. Um, yeah, enjoy today's show. So... As you can see uh, here underneath, I still didn't change anything. So I am going to switch off the CD uh, title and the title is Talks with Near Dash about the past, present and future of NDXJC. Oh. So, there we go. So, as I uh, mentioned before, uh, this is something that uh, has been on my mind for uh, for quite some time. Uh, and oh, title suggestion M A A AMA. Hey, round wave cross share. Welcome to Jake Life One Only. Yeah, cool. Dark show here on Twitch. Uh, title suggestion AMA. What does AMA send me? Oh, ask me an anything. Um, title suggestion is not uh, ask me anything right now because uh, before we are coming to that section, there is a shit ton 
of stuff that I want to talk about first. Hi T! Welcome to Jake Alive One Only. Talk show here on Twitch. So, um I'll try to keep it as short as possible. Uh knowing myself <laughs> myself this is going to be um a long ass show, hopefully uh like two and a half hours. Um Hopefully shorter, don't think so. But today's show is also from the heart. Um, want to tell you awesome people uh, some stories. <laughs> Super here, Jimmy. I'll keep it short as possible. Show uh, runtime seven hours and still going. Well, actually, the first show that I did was around six hours. <laughs> So yeah, um, and hi NECA, we're called Jake Alive One Only Jake talk show here on Twitch. So, um, first of course we are going to talk about the past. Uh, there are some uh, topics that I do want to talk about, uh, like um, how was I exposed to J-Core, uh, how did the love of J-Core came to be, uh, the J-Core back in the day, um, uh, what else is there? Uh, what is the spark of doing Jake Alive and the road up until today? Then we also have the present, uh, where we are today, uh, what are the stats and stuff. Uh, and then also we are going to talk um, about the future. We are having several topics. <laughs> First is Boomer Talk. Uh, yep, Kenny Core definitely is. Um, so, the... People that has been on my show since the beginning, uh, you uh, probably have heard these stories already. Uh, yeah, already before. Uh, you'll probably also uh, have seen several shows uh, how we did. So, first we are going to start. Okay, uh, I am watching my screen every now and then because I have wrote like a shit ton of text. Um, by a, some of them, I only have a title and just uh, talk out of my head and just try something. And by some um, topics, I do have like something written down. So then I am going to read that um, yeah, for you people. So the first question, oh not a question, uh, um, the first topic uh, for the past is how was I exposed to J Corp? So um, back in the day when I was uh, let's see uh, which year was this? Uh, let me go back to 2003. Uh, I was uh, pretty much into uh, hardcore. Um, I always have been uh, into hardcore since I was 12 years old. And I was 12 years old in 1995. So we are now going to uh, 2003. So that's mean I was uh, 20 years old. Been going to hardcore parties uh, pretty much uh, for several years. Uh, my life was only hardcore. And um, uh, yeah, and that is what I knew. But also around that time, in 2001, 2002, I also uh, fell in love with anime. And of course, um, anime has uh, good shows, good movies. Um, uh, good shows, good movies, uh, good vibes. Um, and I also uh, was really interested in uh, conventions back then. But the thing is, I didn't know about Dutch conventions uh, around the time, and uh, the only things that I, that I did know was the conventions in uh, in America. So, in 2003, uh, I had another uh, hardcore friend of mine uh, who was also interested in anime, but also in hardcore. So I have been going to uh, parties with uh, my friend back then for uh, yeah, for. At least two years uh and then we suddenly said oh you know we found a convention here in the netherlands so yeah should we go to the convention um and we said you know let's do it it's awesome i really want to see 
Uh, and that was like, I don't know, um, four months before the convention that we said, yeah, okay, let's go. But uh, let's say two months after or one month before uh, the convention, uh, there was an article about sharp nose sounds in a Dutch anime magazine called Anyway. So in this uh, article, uh, I think on the first show, uh, we had the person that actually wrote uh, the article it is one full page talking about DJ Sharpno. Uh, if I also remember correctly out of my head, um, it featured the PPPH uh, album. Was it the PPPH album? Yeah, it was definitely the PPPH album. So then uh, in this article, if I still remember correctly, uh, th not only did they talk about uh, DJ Sharpno, uh, what, uh, what sh of who Sharpno is, um, but also talk about the uh, Japanese hardcore scene, um, about high speed music. Um, the music sounds like um, uh, the 1990s hardcore, but with anime samples in there between. That's why. I wonder if you can find that article around. Um, yes and no. Uh, yes, I can probably find an article because I still have contact with that uh, person. Uh, and no, this article is probably hard to find. <laughs> so, okay, where was I? Okay, so the, the friend of mine, he, uh, he showed me this article. He made a picture or he, he scanned. He scanned it for me. Wait, I suddenly remember something because I think my friend scanned this article for me. Um, give me a sec. Give me a sec. Maybe I can find it. Um, let's see now. Uh, maybe on the sharp no sound. No. Where? Out of channel, no. Another success. No, uh, no, I, I don't think I can. Yeah, maybe. If no. No, sadly, I, I, I don't have it anymore. But. I was really interested in this, um, okay, I, 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 if I can find the article, I will post it on Discord, uh, I will try to contact my uh, my friend, let's see if he uh, answers. So, okay, uh, I was really interested in this article, I, I've been reading it, and also that was the moment that I started to discover uh, the Japanese hardcore, because back then, J-Core wasn't J-Core, it was just... Speed Rave. That was uh, because that is the actual style what uh, Sharpnel made back then. The the whole anime hardcore tunes that we, at least we boomers, came to know and love. So from here on, I started to. Um, th this was my start of the journey into the J Core um, uh, rabbit hole. So. What was the website called again? It was sharpno.net. The website back then was really primitive. Uh, you had um, uh, a website showing Sharpno, uh, who is Sharpno, um, also uh, a few articles, a few parties that he played in. Or at least they played in because uh, not only Sharpno played, but also uh, back then his girlfriend uh, Lemmy. So they, they both played uh, together uh, also in uh, certain groups. Um, and there was... Um, there was... Um, I call it, it's not a forum. Um, Jesus, well, what was it called again? It's, it's not a forum, but it's like a chat. But slow chat, I guess. Right, it's sharpnote.com. 
Uh, I'm not entirely sure if it's... Uh, no, it's not an IRC channel because it's on a website. Uh, no, it's definitely not I, uh, ICQ. It, it, it was um, like a, a slow chat on his website. Um, so starting from here, I... Um, uh, I, I came to uh, express my uh, my love for um, yeah for Sharpio music, and also on this website he had a real player going on with the uh, yeah with the tracks that he has been releasing on his uh, release. Uh, Crowbat FNG, welcome to Jake Alive One Only. Talk to you here on Twitch, and also thank you for the 22 month subscription. Woo! <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's why. Yeah, it's, it is a message board. Yeah, true. Thanks. And yeah, Tom, the website definitely has changed uh, in uh, these years. So I have been listening to uh, Jacob back then uh, because well, once you enter into a rabbit hole, you stay in this rabbit hole and you keep looping it. And I remember uh, it, it was on the same day. Uh, I, I've been already listening to uh, Sharpening Music for the last 45 minutes. And then suddenly a, a track in there made me instantly fall in love with uh, Sharpnel. And that was Zenon. Um, it's um, a, a track of Razephon, uh, another anime. Uh, and I really love this um uh, this track and every time uh, if i heard this track because i was waiting for it and i listened to that radio like for days for hours and every time the track comes along i was like oh man there it comes again oh yeah um up to a, a certain moment that i was literally waiting uh for Z uh, zenon to come and just Record with uh, uh, Cool Edit Pro. Uh, the program was called Cool Edit, Edit Pro. It's, uh, nowadays it's uh, called Adobe Edition. So I was waiting for the moment to record the track. <laughs> oh man! Because also uh, during uh, those days, uh, thank you, Val. During those days, it's pretty much impossible to get uh, music, um, especially if you don't know where to look. It's, yeah, it's um, interesting. <laughs> so in this message board, uh, the, the more I listen to the Sharpnel tracks, the, um, the weeks that I stayed on its, um, um, yeah, on the website, um, Sharpnel, um, oh, me and Sharpnel, we had contacts with each other. And there I also met another Dutch friend of mine. Um, the friend is uh, Mugenju Project, or DJ Strife, They're both the same person. Uh, he also released a couple of tracks uh, on all the Sharpner tracks, um, albums. So, yeah, there I got in contact with him. In 2000 and... Fast forward to 2004, uh, right now at this moment, uh, I already had uh, yeah, more than a year contact with Sharpnel. And another anime uh, con came around, when was this, like in May or in June? And, and he was also uh, planning to come to the Netherlands just to visit. Sadly, I don't have these uh, pictures on this computer. Uh, I was trying to find these pictures, but I couldn't find it anymore. Um, maybe it's still on my older, older computer, but I will try to find that uh, once I go to my mom's place. But uh, so he decided to come to the Netherlands uh, with Lemmy in 2004. Uh, me, DJ Strife, and uh, and my old landlord from the previous house. Uh, we went to visit. Um, yeah, DJ Sharpnel and Lemmy in Utrecht. Utrecht is one of the cities here in the Netherlands. And that was the first time that we met each other in real life. Uh, we went uh, for a little dinner, we had some drinks, uh, had a lot of talks. I was really surprised about uh, Sharpnel's uh, English vocabulary. 
for call for call <laughs> for call our robbery or something like that. <laughs> uh, focal burglary. <laughs> yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, that. I was so impressed uh, by his uh, English knowledge that we could have like a normal English conversation, and it was like, oh man, awesome. So back then, uh, he also gave some, some CDs, uh, T-shirts. Um, I know I have those T-shirts here still in the house. Um, and I said to him, yeah, if you're here in the Netherlands anyway, uh, upcoming weekend we have anime convention. Are you maybe interested in coming and just see? So he, he accepted the invitation and he came to the, uh, to the convention. Uh, not to play, but just uh, as a visitor. So that was uh, really such an awesome time, and I think from there, uh, from there on, I pre-befriended with Sharpno. Uh, not only I was really uh, a big fan of him, but uh, he also uh, yeah became a really good friend of mine back then. Uh, and then starting from uh, from one year listening uh, Sharp No Sound music, I discovered uh, multiple different kind of artists like M Project, MIDI. Uh, I think there were also some tracks from Blasterhead in between. Um, uh, who else do we had back then? I think Shimamura also had some releases. And this is how um, the rabbit hole uh, grinder went. So, you listen to one artist, you come into a whole discog discography, and from there you... Oh, um, Technicium also uh, learned from there. So, I started to learn uh, more about uh, Jacob back then. But in 2004, I think 2004 or 2003, I, I, I forgot again which year it was. Um... I didn't know how to call this kind of music because for me it was new. Uh, me as a, a Dutch person, uh, we really like to have our um, our styles into boxes, so it needs to be classified. But because the music styles, what I hear on Sharp No Sound, it, it's so different. It's like you hear speed rave, you hear uh, hardcore, you hear happy hardcore, you hear some terror, you hear some speedcore, also you hear hardstyle. And I was like, how the hell do I do this? Oh, is uh, the mic not clear? Maybe like this? Shall I uh, talk like this then? So... I asked Sharpno, what is the best... Oh, you hear noises? Oh, then you probably hear the <laughs> washing machine. <laughs> Wait, uh, let me see if I can adjust the sound a little bit. Um, wait up. Uh, mm, go XLR. Maybe if I adjust... Hello? Yeah? Is there sound now? I don't know what the hell happened. Yes, here we go. Okay, cool. Hey there. <laughs> so... Uh, where was I? Oh yeah, okay. Uh, in that case, I asked Sharpno... Um, yeah, can I... Can we use the term J-Core for this? Japanese hardcore. Uh, because this is something that I can't classify. But... It's also something that um, that makes for me easier to use. Um, Sharpno, he also um, agreed to it that uh, because the music styles are so different that even he couldn't classify. Um, the, the music type, what he usually made back then was Speed Rave. Uh, did some hard, hard style and uh, he also called Gabber for, with some of his tracks. So, uh, he 
uh, pretty much agreed, and uh, and I think that he also uh, talked with Midi and with um, and Project back then, and oh, they also said, yeah, this is easier and it's also maybe better for the Western audience uh, because back then there was not really much of a Western audience. I think that if I if I would say like um, fifty to hundred people worldwide, then that is uh, that is probably uh, accurate. So that is also the the time that JCore uh, came to be. Uh, JCore is just an umbrella term for the whole music style that falls uh, within uh, the respectable scene. So the music uh, releases by uh, Japanese artists, uh, Japanese labels, uh, or even in uh, J-Core styles from uh, Western, yeah, abroad um, organizers. So I, I um, let's see what was it? Um, okay, starting from. Uh, there, uh, once the term J Corp came to be, uh, I noticed that um, that the style became bigger and bigger, and bigger, pretty rapidly. Um, this is also the the same time that I joined uh, several uh, yeah organizations like Orcore was the the first uh, J Corp organization that I joined. Um, uh, there was also I think. Um, that was not Lucky Lotus, but there was an other one. I forgot which one it was, but it died out pretty fast. Uh, no, OHR was later. It was a little bit later than that. Um, yeah, I forgot what it was, but uh, first uh, came Orcore. Uh, Animix was... Um, uh, OHR was earlier than Animix. But anyhow, um, so that is pretty much uh, how um, yeah how I was exposed to JCore. Then um, yeah okay this is also the next uh, thing about how did uh, the love of JCore came to be is because uh, of this. Um, I started shifting over to JCore back in two thousand and three because. Uh, coming from my standpoint, uh, growing up with hardcore music uh, in 1990, three. Wait, uh, let's see. I was in group six. Uh, group six was ten year. Uh, ten. Yeah, in 1993, I started listening to uh, Thunderdome. Oh, Round Rift Crusher. OHR was before Allcore? Oh, uh, okay. I didn't know that. So, yeah, okay. Apparently, uh, OHR was before Allcore, but I got to learn of Allcore uh, way later than that. So, yeah, I, I came from Hardcore, and back then, the Hardcore, now we call it uh, Early Hardcore, um, I grew up with fast-paced uh, music with a lot of technical details, uh, hip-hop samples, metal samples, and yeah, cool music. And then suddenly with the death of hardcore back in 1999-2000, the music became so much different than the music what I was used to. Uh, it became darker, it became slower, it became uh, more distorted, and it was like... <laughs> no, the banana is not with technical difficulties, but it's more like it was the industrial sound. It was, it was, I, I came from a hardcore style, 180 to 220 BPM, fast music, um, some awesome sounds, lots of mixing techniques in there, and then suddenly shifted over to 150 BPM. <laughs> You know, like those uh, promo music, CAT scan, um, Peaky Pounder, those kind of music. So, I was... Uh, whenever I go to hardcore parties, I was always in the, the early hardcore parties, of uh, the early hardcore uh, areas. Um, and also around that time... 
I shifted over to uh, Terror and Speed Court. And also, also French Court came uh, a bit later than that. But uh, there were fast-paced music, no bullshit, some technical details in there, hip-hop, metal samples in there. Awesome, great. So... On one hand, I was going to these kind of parties, but j -Core gave me another insight into uh, music. Because the music what I hear with j -Core and with um, yeah, the Sharpen Sound uh, music what I heard back then, Yes, it was uh, uh, anime-based and anime-heavy sample uh, tracks. But you know, for me, it doesn't matter that much because I I love anime back then. And it also had that, that specific hardcore sound that I really love uh, from the 90s. So for me, that was like a really easy shift. You know what? Uh, let's go to J-Core and... Yeah, the, the more I listened to j Core, the, the more I fell in love with the style. Um, okay, you know, back then the music was indeed still pretty primitive. Uh, and then you had like Sharpno and Project Shimamura and the MIDI uh, that they were pretty much on top of the line uh, back then. So I've been listening to the music more and more and more uh, up to a point uh, that I came across uh, Groovy. Uh, Groovy is a web store back then uh, run by M Project. <coughs> oh wait, sorry, the, uh, DJ Chucky <laughs> or both, uh, and Mr. Groovy himself. Um, yeah, and. Um, back then, I already received some CDs uh, from Sharpno back in 2004 and 2005. I said, you know what? Uh, I, I'll buy some uh, CDs. I, I think I, I bought like three of them. Uh, two of them were Technetium uh, releases and two others I forgot. But uh, also with the um, uh, Groovy.com. Uh, um, there was like uh, you, you can hear like previews and the previews back then there was like with a real player uh, download link so you had 32 K bits uh, quality <laughs> uh, but it doesn't matter back then in 2004 2005 doesn't matter because yeah that was my only way getting music so so uh, and I really love Machina back then and I, uh, yeah, you know, I, I took the leap of faith and just bought uh, some CDs. Really loved it, loved, loved it uh, to the death. Um, back then, I was o also going to the online events from Allcore, uh, Otaku Hardcore Revolution. And you also had, uh, I think, Lucky Lotus back then. Um, and some other kind of organizations. Um yeah, I found a place. It was really awesome uh, with like-minded people. Yeah, that was uh, pretty awesome. Then uh, comes the next part, the j -Core back in the day. So I mentioned before that the j -Core back in the day was uh, mostly uh, anime uh, heavily sampled music. Um, and the music was definitely really, really different than uh, what we have nowadays. Uh, back then, uh, a lot of these artists, uh, they are jumping into the hype train, into the J-Core, because, yeah, this is something that uh, they um, they were not used to in the past, and now suddenly uh, a big audience uh, outside of Japan uh, came to be so it, that became a main staple for them to uh, keep pushing uh, further um, and yeah you know for us uh, western people we were really happy that uh, that these artists are uh, coming yeah coming more into the uh, to the western scenes uh, and keep making more music they gained a lot of uh, popularity back then but yeah, like I mentioned, the music was different. It was uh, a little bit more uh, primitive. Um, the music didn't change much uh, between 2004 and 2010. Uh, they pretty much did the same. Uh, but starting the shift around 2010, uh, the music became 
a little bit more serious. Uh, there were some people back then that... Um, okay, uh, how can I uh, say this? Um, the term j uh, became something else than it should be. Because uh, back around 2010... Uh, uh, people were associating uh, j core with the music style that um, yeah, that Sharp Note was making. Uh, and, okay, technically spoken, it's called j core now again, still, but with the uh, A and Y, the cooler j core. But the term j core J, uh, Stripe Core, that you can see like over here, uh, it got associated with that kind of music style. And also around that time, I noticed that uh, several artists, uh, they were already saying, uh, J uh, we, we are not making J-Core because that, that's only for nerds. And it was like, what happened? It's like, okay, so I, uh, I have spoken with several people back then. Um, and you uh, pretty much had like uh, two camps. Um... Before 2010, there was like one camp, and then by 2002, no, 2010, there were two camps. You have the nerd camp, so uh, where the Dojin hardcore music is sold, and uh, those uh, geeks and nerds uh, go to party. And you have those smaller hardcore parties that doesn't want to uh, compare themselves to the regular Jake artist. Um, and I had like one uh, contact person back then, DJ Lunch. Uh, or the Cinderella. Both is, uh, were the same person. Um, release on a Tanashi album. Um, yeah, I, I contacted him. And uh, back then we had some good chatters. Uh, and he was saying um, that he started uh, Tokyo Hardcore Revolution. No? Um, Tokyo Hardcore Construction. Uh, more as, uh, as underground hardcore parties. Not for nerds. And it was like... Okay, this is interesting, but w the scene is already so small. Why, uh, why do you want to split yourself into a smaller scene? So uh, he indeed uh, mentioned why uh, why he wanted to do that, uh, and that is also because uh, within the, the J-Core scene, a lot of happy hardcore is being played, um, and then you uh, had. A speedy and then you had oh, speedy <laughs> you had a midi you had a, a cure death uh uh you had to pass light playing over there but these are people within the nerd scenes but then you have these other kind of people uh, that wants to play uh, dutch uh, italian uh, belgian hardcore um yeah and they were living for that um sadly uh, my contact person committed suicide. Uh, if um, I, I, I'm uh, pretty much 99% sure it is suicide if I hear from uh, from uh, several people. But um, he was pretty much my only contact person uh, within uh, the other hardcore scene because I was truly interested to uh, learn about this uh, other scene, but. Yeah, um, sadly, a, a lot of uh, people committed suicide uh, also within the J-Core scene. Um, yeah, and uh, he is sadly one of them. Uh, and that was also pretty much my only link uh, that got cut off. So my knowledge into that hardcore scene is pretty limited. Okay, back to, uh, yeah, like I said, the or back in the day. Uh, starting from 2010, the music became more serious and more artists are uh, trying to, it's not trying to, but uh, more artists, they, they were fed up of the name j -Core because uh, it's, it's not the music style that uh, they want to make. But still, in my head, j -Core is an umbrella term. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's it's the one thing, but yeah, the, the, it doesn't really matter that much anyway. Because in the end, it's still EDM. It's still music. It's awesome. Um, for me, that was also pretty much uh, the the time 2010. Uh, there was my uh, J Core um, Prime. 
Um, no. That, yeah, 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 no. <laughs> yeah there, there was my J-Corp Prime one. Uh, because uh, I was uh, heavily invested in j -Core. I knew a lot about the artist, uh, I have a lot of contact with the artist, um, I also uh, organized my own uh, online uh, festivals back then called uh, Warp Zone um, Streamforce and all uh, Warp Zone Uprising. Um, and also back then I had 30 artists, uh, really famous artists, are also participating in the event. Uh, give me a sec, uh, let me take a sip. <laughs> so, um, so, 2010, that was also the, the year uh, that I had um, a lot of chances. The first one is that... Um, M project he asked me um, if I wanted to do a CD compilation uh, for uh, Mob Squad Tokyo. So I was really fortunate to uh, have given this chance because it was one of my dreams back then um, to have something of mine, of uh, something of mine, uh, that I made something that comes on a Japanese label. You know, I don't care about releases on western labels but i really wanted to have something uh, on a japanese label so he offered me a uh, mob squad tokyo uh, black label and a mob squad uh, black label um it's not really my dream label back then because i was so a huge fan of maddest chickendom um why? Because Madness Chickendom is the label that has a lot of terror, speedcore, grindcore, and that, that was really my thing. That, that I listened to that kind of music, I love that kind of music, um, yeah, and that was my biggest wish. But, uh, but of course, it's something that I cannot... He gave me enough I could not refuse. <laughs> so... I asked uh, M Project uh, if I was allowed to uh, do a mix between uh, Mob Squad Tokyo, Mob Squad Black Label, uh, and uh, Madness Chicken on releases, because I know it's all owned by the same uh, parent company. Uh, and he said, yeah, sure, can. So for me, that was like, oh, man. So yes, I had my own CD uh, release. Uh, not long after... Uh, I got a chance uh, with uh, CSR, the Canadian Speaker Resistance, to do another j -Core mix uh, for This Is Terror, which I did, uh, thankfully. Um, and then I, I think more towards the end of the year, M Project asked me if I wanted to do another uh, mix uh, together with DJ Sharp, uh, Sharp, no, uh, Schwarzenegger, with what was it called again? Fuck to the Future. Uh, I think that was Fuck to the Future, indeed. So, that was my j -Core Prime uh, in 2010. Uh, but sadly, starting from 2011 to 2012, um, that was the moment that I kind of left the j -Core scene, because there was, like, um, too much drama and too much... Uh, oh, geez, what was the word again? Uh, negativity and uh, hostility towards other people, other members. Um, I'm not talking about only the community people, but also some several of the Western artists. So, for me, it was like um, I always tried to did my best to. Uh, 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 Jesus, um, uh, how can I rephrase this? I always try to give something to the community uh, by uh, doing events, uh, uh, helping people, uh, and also for other events uh, like Orcore, um, I have gotten like some high-profile artists for their li uh, online streams. And... Yeah, with all the negativity and uh, people saying, yeah, uh, 
you're either in their inner circle or you're not in their inner circle and to get into the inner circle you need to lick boots and uh, say that uh, certain artists are like god and it's like for me it was like i am not going to suck up to these kind of fucktards so 2011 2012 that was pretty much uh, the death of jcore for me at least the online scene um back then i uh, started to do my own things uh i had this is terror uh on hardcore radio um uh oh okay this is also um uh, the next point uh of this uh, show that is uh, me at hardcore radio in 2010 okay well this is something that i am going to read so since 2010, I have been part of a Dutch online hardcore radio station called Hardcore Radio, hosting my own show every Tuesday. Uh, from 2010 to 2016, I did This Is Terror Live. Uh, and this show, uh, I took the show over from uh, DJ Plague because uh, of a sudden deportation uh, back uh, to Canada because he overstayed his welcome. Uh, he illegally lived here in the Netherlands for... Eight years, I think. Uh, but he did go back and forth to Canada and everywhere in uh, Europe. And then uh, one day, an overzealous uh, border patrol um, he banned DJ Plague from the Netherlands for three whole years. <laughs> that was like, what? So, yeah, uh, because of his uh, sudden deportation, I uh, I inherited his This is Terror show. Uh, 2010 is also the same year that I got to l learn DJ Plague. Uh, yeah, Kenny Core, he was uh, banned for three years into coming into Europe. So, uh, with This is Terror, uh, I had my own uh, show. We started with a lot of terror music, and suddenly and slowly I started to... Uh, implement more J core in there. First, we started out slow with the the harder artists, and then uh, later we had like a DJ Shimamura. We uh, we had M Project doing stuff for us. We had um, I, I think we are. I also managed to get Red Alice once. Um, let's see what is uh, blah, blah, blah. Okay, for me it was a huge chance that I, uh, when I started uh, and I was able to bring Jcore uh, to my show. Of course, most of them online, but I had some uh, awesome moments that uh, that some artists came to the Netherlands. So I, uh, we had Rough Sketch, uh, Muske came twice, and also CDR live in the show. Uh, for me, back then, that was like, oh man... I got this J Core artist from my show. Holy shit! Alive, I see them and uh, I I get to get uh, to have uh, dinner with them. Yeah, that's why it's CDR. <laughs> so yeah, that was really awesome. Uh, let's see. Um, okay, in 2016, I had my own thing going on. As this is terror is not something that I uh, could associate it with anymore, and started with Warp Zone Life. Uh, out of nowhere. Uh, during this time between 2016 and 2020, uh, I was able to get uh, other Japanese artists uh, like Musuke and Dub Dub, Savage Stage, uh, Bayo Hanya, and Tanikichi live in studio. So for me, this is also another, yeah, another other awesome thing. Um, I almost had Kamikaze, but COVID came and. Yeah, that pretty much stopped. So from 2016 to 2020, I had an awesome and also awesome times. Um, when COVID happened, I pretty much stopped going over there. And it also made me realize uh, it cost me a lot of money, a lot of time. Uh, I did so much effort and hardly got any benefits or praise in return. Yes, during these years, I certainly had great bookings. But in general, it wasn't uh, really much compared for what I did uh, in all these years. Uh, I went back there a few more times, uh, but I went there pretty much unwillingly. Back then, I knew for sure uh, that this is something I really want to do anymore. At least not in current status. 
for me, I already... I, for myself, I overstayed my welcome over there. Um, so, then is the next question. What sparked the, uh, what sparked, uh, the joy of uh, J.Core Life? So, uh, way before, back in 2000 and... When we were to Japan, 2008, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so in 2006, I went to Japan, uh, meet up with uh, M Project and uh, Sharpno. Uh, I also had a, a really awesome uh, made cafe uh, drink with Sharpno and Lemmy. Um, and that is like the start uh, with my contacts, uh, a Japanese artist. 2008, me and Kim, we went to uh, Japan again. Uh, there was also my uh, first uh, international booking. Yes, my very first international booking in the summer of 2008 uh, in the, the, hard, the, uh, the day of hardcore 2008. Um, back then, I was really a huge fan of Akira Death. And my only wish and only goal back then was uh, to get like some kind of praise or at least that Akira Dev would just take a look at my set for five minutes and I would be a really happy man. So uh, thanks to Sharp now uh, and I'm Project, they, uh, they, uh, they told me, yeah, you, you can come to play at a party. I was a starter DJ, yes. Uh, and I was in the, the second room, the break room. And... So I, I asked them, yeah, what should I play? Because I have no idea what to play. Uh, do I need to play like something from your own country? Or do I need to play something from my own country? And I asked uh, Sharpno and M Project, and they both say, hey, you can do whatever you want. And I was like, I could do whatever I want. Are you sure? They said, yeah, you can do. Okay. So I was the starter DJ at the second room. Uh, my BPM counter started at 230 BPM and ended with 600. <laughs> me as a starter DJ. Uh, and the DJ after me played house music on 126 BPM or so. <laughs> and I was like, hmm, okay. So... Yeah, I colonized <laughs> the day of hardcore. But to my surprise, uh, after um, uh, b before the whole uh, show started, I was there like already one hour before, uh, and I got to uh, yeah get to meet some awesome people. Like um, I got to meet Midi, got to meet uh, Akira Dev, both members. Um, and DJ Depath got to meet them as well. Um, and during my set, uh, the first five minutes, I guess, um, it was like I was really nervous. Like, oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, man. I was so nervous. Um, yeah. It was my first time abroad and first time playing for a so totally different audience. And I was like, <laughs> man. But who did I see? Sitting on the corner enjoying themselves. Not one, but both members of Akira Dev. And for me, on, on that moment, it was like, oh man, oh man, they're, they're watching me. And I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so for the whole half an hour, yes, I played a half hour, they enjoyed. Uh, they stayed through the whole set. And I was like, oh my god, this is my dream come true. And after the set, both of them, they came to me and they said, yeah, you had a really good set. I really loved it. And I was like, mm -hmm. okay, uh, I, I really had a fangirl moment at that then. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I was also pretty excited to see uh, Akira Dev performing. And oh my God, it was so awesome. Uh, yeah, that it solely uh, stuck into my mind. Um, 
Then going into 2016 when uh, we went to Japan again. Um, and of course, during these years, uh, I built up uh, a lot of contacts with high profile uh, j core artists back then. Um, and yeah, and I told several people, yeah, uh, I am coming to Japan in 2016. Um, is there maybe a place that, uh, yeah, that I can play? So I was, um, um, I, I was really grateful that I was able to play at uh, two different kind of parties. Uh, the first one is uh, Happy Jack uh, vs. Extreme Heart in Tokyo. And then the week after, I got to play at uh, Warp Zone uh, versus Yatsuzuki Hardcore in Sapporo. So, uh, during the time that I was there, uh, I got to meet really awesome people. Uh, Sharpner was there, Midi, uh, he wasn't even on the lineup, but he came especially uh, to see me. And it was like, whoa, Midi is actually coming to see me? What the hell? I was really surprised. Uh, uh, that was also the first time I uh, got to meet uh, Red Ogre. Uh, always had a good uh, contact with Red Ogre, but yeah, since Dean, uh, he's, um, he's really an awesome buddy. Um, yeah. But this time when I played there, I didn't play Terror. No. <laughs> uh, mm, I, I started with some uh, Happy Hardcore stuff and then I switched over to Terror at the end after 40 minutes. Um, Akira Sato from Akira Dev uh, came to the party just to see me as well. Uh, and also to his surprise, I played one of my favorite tracks of his. And he was like, oh, thank you. Thank you for playing my track. And I was like, no, oh, thank you for making it. I love this. <laughs> it, it was a golden oldie from 2010, 2011. Um, so I knew back then I had a lot of contacts. Uh, the week after I went to Sapporo, uh, got to meet a lot of amazing artists over there. Um, and then two weeks after... Uh, went to M3 and on that moment I um, it, it struck to me that uh, apparently I am more popular than I thought that I was because uh, as I was strolling through M3 uh, M3 is uh, a comic market where you can buy uh, CDs, uh, comics uh, figurines, whatever so I was just walking around uh, and having some uh, talks with uh, some friends of mine, like um, had some conversations with uh, Akira Sato, with Rough Sketch, of course, uh, Musuke, Red Ogre, uh, also had some uh, talks with Sharpnel. Um, uh, 3D Now uh, also uh, had some talks, Ian, uh, Speed Beats, SBZ, SBZ. Um, yeah, yeah, I was walking around, um, talking, and these artists, um, uh, yeah, they walked me around, uh, the stands, and suddenly, uh, I see several artists, ah, Neo Del San, here, CD, and I'm like, what? <laughs> and I, I was like, oh, here, another CD, and so suddenly I had, like, CDs in my hand without paying, and I was like, uh, Okay, <laughs> thanks. <laughs> and this uh, pretty much happened with uh, a lot of circles. Uh, and for me, that was also... I, I, I got to contact them. And I was like, um, had a conversation, uh, talked with them. Uh, and also with some artists uh, that I never talked before. Um, I, I, I talk about their tracks that I knew from the past. And they was like, you know, this is a magical thing. Uh, I had this with Rough Sketch, I had it with Red Ogre, I had this with uh, Miyuske, um, uh, I ha had it with Quill, uh, also from Sapporo, uh, that I talked about one of their earlier releases, and I said, yeah, I have been following you since then, 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 it was really awesome, and I became fan of you, and they were like, what? How? <laughs> and, it, it, and it was like, oh man. Okay, um... So yeah, the, the people uh, did enjoy the talks. I uh, received their CDs. Uh, of, of course, thanking them uh, really much uh, for those CDs. And yeah, you know, 
for me, that was the moment. Okay, you know, I have a lot of con. Oh no, wait, sorry. Uh, then after I went to Osaka to another party, just to party because uh, I had one goal in mind. Uh, one of the few goals what I had in mind was to have an autograph of C Type. Uh, I have seen C Type back in 2008. Uh, never had a conversation with him, but I did have conversation with him on the internet. So. Because I really wanted to have my uh, vinyl, uh, my CSR vinyl uh, signed by him. That was one of my goals. So I went to Osaka with an, uh, a friend of mine. Is one of the um, the hardcore dancers in Tokyo. Um, so she brought me to um, Club Triangle, uh, and she also uh, introduced me to several artists like Bash and Nubadub. Uh, and seven states and i was like oh man awesome they were speaking english to me i was speaking english to them and it was so amazing to get to learn to know about them but now coming back into what the spark of doing jake life so in, in 2016 um i kind of made of a promise to uh to sharpno uh, on the last day that i have seen him and his wife together with kim that in the future i really want to do something uh for jcor and i want to contribute something really amazing for the scene um so i had something in mind um i came home with 60 cds and from those 60 CDs, I think I already bought two of them. <laughs> um, and it, I was like, okay, I have like a whole cabinet. Okay, now, as you can see, my cabinet is pretty uh, empty. But I had a whole cabinet with CDs. Uh, I have a shitload of more CDs in my, uh, in my luggage. But what can I do with it? So my first thought was doing uh, YouTube videos and doing uh, CD reviews, uh, listening to the CDs, talk about them a little bit. And I was like, yeah, I am going to do that. But days uh, became weeks, weeks became months and months became years. And I was like, every time I want to do something with Jacob, but I don't know what. Uh, and Kim was uh, pretty much kicking my ass all the time. And I was like, yeah, um, I, yeah I, I don't really have a good plan. I don't know what to do. So I kept continuing on doing um, Warps on Life on Hardcore Radio. Um, yeah, just doing my thing. But every time I come back to the CDs and I was like, yeah, but... I, I don't want to do uh, YouTube videos talking about CDs. This is not interesting. This is not like... I cannot enjoy that. It's like, who the hell wants to listen to me talk about CDs and not listening to the CDs? And I was like... The, the, the more I think of it, the more demotivated I got. The problem is... I had the J. Life logo that you can see up here... I had this already in mind since 2016, the end of 2016. I had like, okay, this is something that I really want, but never really did much with it. So 2016, 2017, 2018, I became more demotivated and up to a certain point, uh, it was also uh, uh, the year that we uh, were going to get married. And because... Weddings are so expensive. I was at that point, like, okay, you know, I can better sell my CDs and give these CDs to uh, another collector because yeah, I'm not doing anything with it anymore anyway. Uh, I know what kind of worth I had on uh, in the uh, in the lock, and it was something that I could definitely uh, use uh, for the wedding. Uh, and I was almost to the point that even Hell Fury came to me with a, a serious uh, question. Um, yeah, how much will you ask for your co whole collection? I was like, <sighs> I don't know. There are some CDs I am going to keep, but like 99% of these CDs probably going to sell. So I was like, 
man I, uh, at the moment i was heartbroken but i was also like i'm not doing anything with the cds uh, and there's only only collecting dust i can better give it away to somebody but kim and thankfully wait let's see here thankfully, thankfully to this woman over there she told me i will be really pissed off if you will sell your cds for the wedding because that is your whole life, your whole, uh, yeah, your whole collection this is the thing that you grew up with. This is the thing that you love. And I was like, yeah, but we really need the money. Yes, <laughs> Aimi is uh, sleeping uh, in the tower. Oh, by the way, the tower is uh, was from Ter, and we have this tower now here for three weeks. And I think in these three weeks, Aimi is lying there like pretty much every day for the half of the day <laughs> oh. and she's playing with the balls so yeah uh, and i was telling myself all the time yeah but i am not doing anything with these we can use the money for the wedding because wedding is so expensive uh, you know, it's six. You know, it's seven, eight thousand euro just for the wedding, and for the CDs, I can easily get four or five thousand euro out of it. And I was like, "Yeah, we can use the money." And Kim keeps saying, "No, you are not fucking selling these CDs. Yeah, uh, you already sent, uh, sold so much of your games. You already sold uh, some other kind of stuff." You, I didn't have any other hobbies. And I was like... <sighs> and on the other hand, Hellfreaker was still waiting for an answer. <laughs> and... Uh, back then, I said to Hellfury, mm, I'm not entirely sure yet. I'll wait. Um, if I'm gonna sell them, uh, I'll let you know within uh, a half year. So... 2018 uh, we were married um, the whole summer uh, was there and I was still looking at the CDs uh, we were um, yeah to be honest we came into a sort of debt that uh, that wasn't supposed to happen and from the debt uh, we had like uh, we need to pay this like for four years Yes, no. Um, yeah, um, two years. Yeah, we, we paid for two years, so our uh, our debt was um, yeah was for our preparing for a wedding. Um, so I said, yeah, I I can better buy the CDs because then we're uh, away of the debt. But Kim, the warrior that she is, she uh, kept saying. No, you are not going to f fucking touch those CDs. You are going to keep the CDs because you're going to be sorry. And whenever you get motivated and you really want to do something and you don't have the CDs anymore, then uh, then what are you going to do? And I was like, yeah, you're right. And I'll see what happens. So uh, I told Hellfury, nah, I'm not going to sell now, but maybe in the future, uh, if I'm going to sell, uh, you're the first one that I'm going to contact. Uh, and which is still so. So then came 2019. Uh, back then I was already really busy with, um, with Warps on Life. Um, suddenly uh, in 2019, Warps on Life was really successful. I got more bookings. Uh, I got more bookings as uh, Comrade Xeroxu with Russian Heart Base. Uh, one of the most beautiful bookings that I had. So, uh, and also Sharpno, of not Sharpno, uh, Rush Sketch was coming in the, uh, in the winter. So I was really busy, didn't have much time. And also in 2019, uh, I went to FinCon. That is uh, a Dutch convention with a swimming pool and um, uh, in like, a, yeah, it's a Dutch convention. And I printed out my first Jake or Life t-shirt with the logo, uh, even though I already had the logo done by 2017. Uh, I printed out and say, you know, let's... Um, yeah, banana is a camping con. 
Um, it's not a Campicon, it's Center Parks. Uh, so it's uh, more luxurious. <laughs> so I had a, a J. Colive t-shirt, I was walking with it, and I was like... Okay, now what? So... Uh, several months passed, um, and then that was 2020. I had back issues, so uh, I lost my mobility. I had shoulder issues, I lost my mobility over there. Uh, yeah, but then I was advertising uh, Jake Live even before it existed. True. So then COVID happened. Um, so I started live streaming at home with Hardcore Radio, and it was like a godsend for me because I was able to do shows from home. I was really happy because um, now I can go home, do the show, uh, instead of going to the studio, wait until they're ready, and then drive all the way back home. And I was like, oh man, this is a godsend. So I started buying this microphone. Uh, and after the microphone, like two weeks after, I, I, I was into the whole streaming um, uh, rabbit hole. And then I also uh, purchased my Go XOR, as you can see here, so that I control my sound. And um, then I also bought my first boom arm, which I am not using anymore. Uh, and next to that, I also bought uh, a second uh, webcam. So I have been spending quite a lot of money and also... Oh, by the way, also on the, um, the light here in the back. Yes, so, um, still need my internet to, uh, to let the thing work. So, yeah, right at this moment, I already spent... Uh, I, I think 700 euros on gear and stuff. And I was like, yeah, you know, I mean, I don't know how long um, COVID is going to happen because maybe like in two or three months we can go back to the studio. So now I'm buying all these uh, expensive gear and I was like, yeah, what am I going to do with it then? Is it just going to uh, let it collect dust? So, yeah, uh, um, at that moment, I seriously started thinking about, okay, what can I do with J-Core? Uh, what can I do with the CDs? Is there something that is interesting enough to, uh, yeah, to do something with that? Uh, because in the last year, I have been streaming a hardcore, uh, streaming hardcore radio with Warps on Life. Um... Uh, it was fun to do, so I already had experience with that. Um, and I was starting to do Jake of uh, um, uh, Hardcore Radio from home. So I was able to do and learn some more other kind of stuff. And I was like, okay, you know, doing uh, live stream shows is fun because it's interactive. Um, but it's usually a bit longer than... Um, uh, than like YouTube videos, because YouTube videos usually 20 minutes is like the, um, um, I, I, I call it the sweet spot. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do? What can I do with J.Core Live? So then suddenly, the, the more I think about uh, YouTube, uh, and, and that was like a big no for me, because this is not something that I want to pursue. Streaming, okay, that is a thing I do want to pursue, but... In what kind of format? How am I going to do that? Uh, will I just play a CD and just type with people? Or will I try to make a show out of it? Here comes the other problem. The other issue. Uh, banana. The best purchase of my life. Uh, it was the start of the best purchase of my life. Uh, then again, the Go XOR. It's the, the most used thing that I have uh, of all my streaming gear. Except for the computer, of course. But this is literally the, the thing that I touch every day. Uh, yeah, and the keyboard, of course, and the mouse. But those three things <laughs> are the best purchases. So, okay, I had all these expensive gear. 
now it's really time for me to think about okay what can i do listening to cds okay that is cool but listen to the cds no my biggest issue around that time is um me personally i pretty much lost myself within the last few years um and what i mean with that is i lost uh, my um spontaneity spontaneous spontaneously spontaneity uh i lost my uh confidence i lost my um uh I, I, on, that, on that moment i was more like uh, if i know the person uh i can easily talk to the person but if it's like uh somebody new uh i was really shy and i yeah uh, I, I didn't had a friend not didn't had um i i was pretty scared uh, to talk to people back then uh up until a point that even with my my closest friends um i i i, I didn't even dare to look them in the eye and it was like um yeah definitely i i became really introvert it's but it's not something that who i was um like kim when she um uh, uh she when she know me in 2006 i was a so totally different kind of person i was like uh maybe not outgoing as now but i was among people i was more into the spotlights i was like i was there so i was so frustrated about myself and there were like a lot of things happening and uh and my uh, um, my mental health became worse uh, by the by the years so for me this is also a an awesome uh, challenge and that was like okay you know what for me now it's time to change i am now on my way to become another person but how am i going to do that okay you know what i am going to do a show with a lot of talking um like with jake life listening to cds uh and this is a show for uh, like-minded people uh, such as myself that really loves the music scene really loves j core and i know at the beginning uh i had a lot of stories to tell uh because uh the, the things what i have done the, the things that i have seen um uh, i laughed i cried or, or whatever it, these are the stories that is definitely worthwhile talking about but i knew that it wouldn't last so long because eventually there's a time that i have told the story like several times and people are not interested anymore so for me this was a huge 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 um uh, challenge to how to uh keep um, yeah, your channel uh, yourself motivated and interesting enough so back then uh this was in um half halfway march and i was like i was looking on youtube uh see how uh how to become a streamer how uh what are the things that streamers need to think of and of course um uh, uh, there are some sketchy uh people say yeah you need to join discord websites uh and get rate uh, rate trains and uh, come to those sites and the people will follow your channel uh and you follow their channels and this is how they raid and it's like okay this is not the way that i want to work so suddenly i came across um two or no yeah, two streamers that i follow especially one um i really do want to mention that uh, this uh, streamer that i have been following is alpha gaming uh, nowadays is uh, senpai gaming so i have been following the tips for since 2020 and always keep watching his videos learn really a lot of the channel about how to become a streamer how to be one um some tech um, advices and things uh and then 
from here you start into going to a rabbit hole you, you watch all those videos you come across another streamer nutty uh where uh, he teaches you uh, a lot about uh streaming elements here with, uh, with obs and stuff and also another one gay level it's um more about um the, how the person should be as a streamer and from uh, from these three favorite um, from these three streamers i learned quite a lot and for me it was a huge challenge because one <laughs> i was scared two uh i'm shy three i am not a person that talk a lot yeah you, you can ask him <laughs> uh i never talk a lot uh and i only talk a lot with uh with either with kim or with three of my best friends now four five five of my very best friends they with them i talk a lot and there i'm more myself but to a totally strange audience i was like the fuck am i going to do the fuck am i going to talk about but then suddenly i gave myself a hard limit you know what fuck it you need to change you need to do something the um, the positive side of things is that i'm already used to talk to a camera with uh uh with warps on life and i was like okay this is something that i can work with okay uh instead of talking to people uh live um uh, i'm talking to a camera um for me it was okay because it's for uh, i talk quite a lot in camera um and instead of uh, looking into different kind of eyes i only see one lens and it's not somebody uh yeah i know that there are people around because i see people chatting and it's like <sighs> okay you know what fuck it i am going to try this and I, i'll see uh um I, i'll see, see what, what we will do I had uh, in mind that we will listen to music, I'll talk about some experiences and some stories, and that's it. And for the first show, I really want to have somebody for interview. Because, uh, yeah, you know, for me, it's like, go hard or go home. Um, this is a thing uh, for me is that I do quite a lot of things half-assed. So I start with something, and I stop using these kind of things or doing these kind of things but it doesn't interest me anymore and eventually it would cost me a lot a lot a lot of money for like i uh i, I bought a tablet in the past uh kim is still using that one for <laughs> 10 years or something like that uh i bought one uh thing i used it only for half a year and after that i hardly even touched that so i was like okay you know what i am going to try uh because i already bought uh, expensive gear fuck it so i made an announcement uh, that i'm going to start jayco live uh on youtube uh, on the end of april so i had for myself one month of time to learn stuff and do stuff hi everyone so welcome to jayco live you want only talk show here on twitch welcome so i had one month of time to uh to do stuff okay the tip what uh these streamers have given me is that the uh, that if you are starting streamer just turn on your camera you can use a crappy uh microphone and that's enough and then you learn along the way um uh, yeah uh, how it works and yeah just keep learning from that but because for me uh, Jake Life is a uh, go hard or go home project. It's something that I really wanted to do for several years, but I don't know what to do. So, um, so yeah, I started uh, making overlays. Like, uh, let's see, do I uh, think I still. I must have these overlays. Uh, let me check. Die, by the way. Let's see. 
Oh, please. Oh, yeah, okay. Um, uh, let's see. Huh? No, 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 I, I'm, I'm getting to the good parts. I'm getting to the good parts, so... No, but it's something really important that I need to talk about. Let's see, I hope this works. Okay, so... This is like the... Okay, this is not even uh, version 1 uh, of the uh, the overlay. But... Um, as the the months uh, progressed, this uh, came... Of, this had like some more different kind of uh, iterations, some uh, little animations in there. And it was like, you know what? I can also do it easy and just buy overlays and stuff and to make it flashy. But for me, it was like uh, using cheat mode. Um, it's not something that I can learn. It's not something that, um, that I would be proud of. Okay, the crappy overlay that you saw there. Yes, it is crap. But it's crap that I made. It's like, yeah, I'm proud of this. Um, and right now we are also on the next part of the second. That is the road to Jake Live from day one up until the first show. So I have... Yeah, Banana, I was really proud of my work. Uh, I was not experienced with uh, Photoshop. I was uh, like really basic experience. But I was really proud of it. I was like searching uh, pictures, uh, learning how Photoshop works. Um, and I also remember uh, end of March, beginning of April, I came into a uh, Nilnia party. Because uh, I never used Twitch back... Oh, yeah, I did use Twitch back but not really. But starting from uh, COVID, I used Twitch even more. I came into uh, the New Year stream, saw uh, the the Pansu Punks playing, and back then, to get the Jayco Life animation working, so it took me seven fucking hours to learn how to animate that thing. That was like, how the fuck am I going to animate? So, yeah, you know, starting. Uh, to learn this kind of stuff, um, yeah, it, it just took so much time. And then came day one, 26th of April. Uh, yeah, it was showtime, and it was amazing. It was like, oh my god, I am doing this at this moment. And it was like... Um, I'm also must say that I am pretty pretty fortunate that during my first show uh, I was able to get uh, 15 viewers, my very first show, uh, and like 99% of the streamers that start out on Twitch they start with zero views, and that was like I am really really blessed. So. That is the road um, to the first show. Now we come to the present. So, yeah, yeah, banana. We had uh, 15 views, and then I, I think the the the, the next uh, few shows, uh, it was pretty stable at 10 viewers, 10 to 12 back then. So now we are on to the, the second segment of the, uh, this one, and that is the present. Um, let's see. Okay, there's some text in here. Um, first of all, anybody present here now who was also at the first show? Um, uh, Kim was, I think. Kuro was there, I guess. I think Jack is it was there. I think Harley Diver was there as well. Uh, Super Jimmy was there definitely, so yeah, it was really awesome. Uh, yeah, Jimmy, uh, we uh, had an interview with Boris. Uh, yeah, the, the the person that um, yeah that made the article. So yeah, the present. Okay, now is some uh, now I can read uh, what I wrote down. So 
The first thing is, what have we achieved from the start of Jake Life until now? Milestones. So, I started streaming Jake Life on the 27th of April. I thought it was the 26th. With an average of, oh, sorry, 13 viewers. On 19 September 2020, I organized the first online event. Jake Life Rolling Start. Uh, with an average view count of 135 viewers. And even for me, that was like uh, a really interesting uh, thing. And oh my god, Jesus. I already had a lot of stress making <laughs> the regular shows. But my very first online event, that was like... <laughs> I'm organizing an event. But the, the thing with me is, uh, as you know... Uh, me by now it, for me it was a go hard or go home there were a lot a lot a lot of online events happening but most of them are uh, pretty simple it's like uh, one artist play transition to the next artist then it's the next artist when the artist ends transition to the next artist for me I wanted to do something different it's like uh, I wanted to put advertisement in. I, I want to do proper artist uh, introductions um, I, I I want to make uh, um, uh, an experience like you're watching a TV show it's it's so totally different and it was like uh, I have been organizing Deshim Sounds uh, with Jimmy for several years so I uh, already had that uh, uh, that view in mind a little bit uh and also with warp zone i organized uh two different kind of um uh, parties but uh, from my uh, organizers uh viewpoint i knew how to do this but on the other hand i don't know uh how to create something like this so yeah you know it's like going into a cinema uh, you see some advertisements, then you have a movie, uh, and in some cinemas uh, you have like a break time. Uh, um, they go to toilets to have a drink, buy popcorn, or food, whatever, and then the movie continues again. So, with that in mind, I had like, you know what? Okay, I, I really wanted to have like a little bit of a, a cinematic experience, or like, a, yeah. Uh, like Netflix or something like that. It's <laughs> what do you, uh, cinemas have? Ten hour uh, Jake or of uh, <laughs> movies with Jake or soundtracks? Nope, they don't. <laughs> no, but like I said, for me it was really a go hard or go home moment, and I was like, uh, where the hell did I got myself into? Okay, I already had a little experience in video editing. <laughs> But never in my life I had uh, so much video editing done um, in such a short time. It's like I only had one month of time to prepare. And there were a lot, a lot, a lot of stuff that I didn't know how to do. It cost so much time. And I, I, I think I spent certainly around 100 hours on learning how to video edit it. Um, think about stuff uh, how to do this how to do that how to make this appear and i was like oh my god that was also the moment that uh, most of you have seen that was uh close to uh, that was a borderline um burnout but it was a huge success so let's see uh start f with an average view count of 135 viewers so after that success, Gabber Disco Night Live started at November 20, uh, 24, uh, started 24 November 2022 with an average of 33 viewers and still standing strong. Uh, Legend of Terror started uh, 9 February 2021 uh, with an average of 70 viewers, but sadly uh, it had its last show on 14 September 2021 uh, due to a one-sided uh, effort instead of a team effort uh, to uh, 
uh, to come a little bit more in depth. Uh, the first uh, two, three shows, it was definitely a team effort. Uh, people were uh, doing stuff. Um, like Gabber Disco Night Live, they're, they're providing their uh, feedback, they're providing mixes or whatever. They are doing stuff on their end. And, and this is how I work. But suddenly, after three months, I was doing everything on my own. I was like, um, yeah, um, did you already made a mix? Uh, how, uh, how about this? Oh, yeah, no, uh, I don't have time this month. And I'm like, dude, you know, you knew this. Yeah, uh, 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 you, no, I can't. So then I need to shift over to another artist. And uh, of, of course, uh, the artist delivered. And it... it no. Uh, suddenly I was doing everything solo. And on the 20, um, uh, 27... No? Uh, when, the 14th September. That was the last show. Because I got fed up with it. It was... Look, okay, for Jayco Life, that is one-sided. Fine. It's my show. But uh, CSR's A Legend of Terror... One, it's a collaboration. It's not my... Uh, it's not my uh, my thing, but it's a thing that I do support. But yeah, since it's more of a one-sided effort, it took too much energy of me. I I said we're not going to do this anymore. It's no, sadly. As yes, like Daphne said, it needs to come both ways because with Gabba Disco, it comes from both ways, and this is for me uh, reworkable. Um. But on the other hand, uh, Ramen Break did came in the same month, um, on 7th September 2021, with an average of 24 viewers and still standing strong. So uh, with uh, Ramen Break, yeah, um, they are providing the mixes and they are doing their their share uh, of the part, and that makes my uh, my work also easier. Because the, the things that I do uh, with uh, Gabber Disco and with Ramen Break, uh, these are the organizations that I support uh, really much. But um, but they don't really do much on the internet. <laughs> At least Gabber Disco doesn't do much with the internet. And Ramen Break, um, I, I saw a, a post of Detour that uh, so things were not going uh, pretty well with happyhardcore.com back then and i said yeah you know what i support ramen break i have uh, apparently i played at ramen break events uh, back in the past you know what i want to work together with you so yeah this is um how we are now so let's see now uh okay to go more in depth uh, these are the following stats according to twitchtrack.com and Twitch starting from the 26th of April 2020 to now. So on this channel, uh, we have uh, 1.7k active followers. Uh, we have 17k total views. Uh, on uh, TwitchTracker.com, uh, I have streamed for, at least this channel has streamed for 845 hours. But according on Twitch itself, it's 899. And looking at the time right now, it's probably 901 hours. 29.6k uh, hours watched. Um, uh, and throughout this whole period, um, with all the online events, the average viewers uh, is set on 35. Uh, peak viewers of 255 viewers. Thanks to Sharpno during... Uh, Gap Disco's Back to the Disco. Um, 243 active days of streaming. Um, only three Mondays had a downtime. So with a the downtime, there was no show. Uh, we have listened here on JCore Live to 125 releases. Um, there are 13 live stream events organized. Six of them are JCL or JCore Live. Uh, within NDX JCL events, uh, we have featured 167 different kind of mixes. Um, we have one amazing real-life party. 
unmuted last year. Uh, 1,961 recurring gifted and prime subs were given. Uh, 179 all-time high active subs uh, at March 2022. So, I always have been pretty uh, transparent with uh, with everyone, and uh, yeah, and because of all the generosity uh, people um, have shown me in the past, this is also something that you should know: is that uh, the revenue uh, what uh, the channel has received. Uh, starting from 26 uh, May, uh, 26 April 2020 until today, we generated four thousand seven hundred twenty dollars, and that's only on Twitch. So yeah, I was pretty shocked to see um, this number, and um, and in two years' time, there. Uh, we, this channel has generated more money than my 20 years as... No, not 20 years. My 15... Uh, 17 year DJ career. Um, I, I think with my DJ career, I think... I got like 800 euros max. 17 years. And getting this much, I am so really, really thankful to you people. So... The next part is where do we stand now with NDX JCL in general? So right now we have Jayco Live every Monday, a ramen break every first Tuesday of the month, and Gabber Disco Night Live every last Tuesday of the month. Uh, with me trying to recover all the things that happened in uh, in the past few months, so uh, with this I mean uh, with my job, with my health, with yeah, the, the things I have talked about, uh, with my uh, mental um uh how, how you call it um not a breakdown but um well the, the mental abuse what i had received the the last um couple of years i'm working on it um so with me trying to recover all the things that happened in the past few months um i'm trying to pick up the pace again now things are slowly sending in so yeah i have a new job new house and as you can see Still living in boxes, but every week um, it becomes more of an actual house. Uh, let's see. Um, uh, okay, things slowly sending in. I'm really happy with what we have achieved so far, but this is far from over. My aim for now is growth in general, not only on a personal level, but also streaming wise so now we come um, to the last part of the segment but it's also uh, quite huge and that is the future so Joe is hitting his 40th birthday this year what can we expect so as I become 40 years old in March I want to celebrate it in a grand way with, of course, uh, a birthday bash probably mid-March. Uh, after the birthday bash, uh, bash I will also uh, do a couple of uh, boomer sets with aliases that I had in the past. For this year, uh, I'm reintroducing uh, the Syndicator, Commandant Garuda, and Comrade Zerokazu, um, and also the return of the good old Neodash Xerox. But also under Neodash Xerox, I want to do different kind of sets that defined to who I am today. So yeah, um, this is the first announcement of my birthday bash. Um, I am trying to figure out how I am going to do this, how I'm going to name it yet, but it is coming. Okay, uh, what can we expect? Um, all right, we can expect more activities on YouTube. Um, okay, at this moment, I have two YouTube channels, uh, Jayco Life and Neodar Xerox. Both of them are separate from each other. Jayco Life focuses more on the Jcore aspect, um, yeah, the Jcore aspect and the NDSJGL livestream events uh, DJ sets. At this moment, we have 258 subscribers at the Jayco Life channel. 
The most viewed uh, video is a mini mix I did, uh, Mneco uh, Necology, with 351 views. As for life, the most viewed is 10 years of allergy with 213 views. The Jayco Life YouTube channel is a growing channel with weekly uploads. New Death Xerox channel, on the other hand, is not really much of an active channel. Uh, it has only 19 videos uh, on it. I don't know how or when it happened, but the two of my most viewed uh, videos uh, is from my Paradise Mixes and the 15 year Digiversary with uh, 23k views on my Hyper Techno Mix and 6.4k uh, on my Eurobeat Mix. My number three is also uh, a Paradise Hyper Techno Mix with 2.1k. The number four <laughs> is the unmuted trailer with 495 views. And the number five <laughs> is my uh, Otaku Hardcore Revolution two, uh, 2021 mix with 321 views. So, <laughs> so uh, my uh, hardcore set with the most views is the OHR um, set, thanks to... Um, Brown Wave Crusher, of course. Uh, let's see. Uh, I haven't been uploading mixes in the last few months, a uh, year. But I do plan to do so as I still have a backlog of mixes that I can upload. The thing is, uploading mixes take uh, a really long time, uh, even back in the old house. And with the current upload speeds that I have, that I've been borrowing the internet from my neighbor. So yeah, I'm still waiting for my... Uh, my optic fiber to come in still no sign or uh, whatever but yeah uh keeping strong hopefully it will come somewhere this year but yeah uh, it takes um uh, let's see more than an hour to upload one hour of video and for me that's like way too long and i prefer not to keep my computer on like um yeah at night times Uh, let's see. Okay, Twitch has a bad discoverability and YouTube has a way bigger reach. So I know I need to do more with YouTube. Uh, if my NG uh, let me do it, I want to upload more mixes uh, than the ones that I did or am doing for online events. So the next part is uh, other online of offline events. Will I participate? Yes, for sure. Uh, next to streaming music shows, I also enjoy uh, DJing. Uh, though it is my strict policy not to ask if I can perform somewhere. Uh, you know, for my own self, uh, I don't want to force myself uh, one to another uh, for my own personal gain. Uh, though, uh, would I go abroad or for a commercial event, uh, things will be different, of course. Uh, for most events, uh, if I'm being invited, I, I will hardly say no. If people come up to me, uh, they are making, uh, yeah, they're showing me they are making effort, and which also motivates me to return that effort by doing a mix. So, will Warps on Life return? Uh, yes, Warps on Life will return again, but not in the same uh, concept as I have been doing the last few uh, years. So, what I am planning to do is uh, probably starting in March or or in April that every week uh, we will have Warps on Life and every week there is another artist. So then we have Stains and Edgy, uh, Party Rico, we have me, we have uh, DJ Evilian, uh, we have Skulls and Angelic and we switch every week. Uh, what I do want to do is go to the studio once a month uh, to do a bigger stream, invite some other artists and yeah, um, and doing the, the things that we have done in the past. And of course, uh, Twitch exclusive. Next segment. What are the, the short term goals? Okay, for now, uh, I want to focus more on growth in general. Uh, 10 September has been the last event that we have done uh, here on the show with Technoshocks. The last few months I had uh, been slacking uh, due to a big change in our private life. Uh, 
That's such thing, uh, having a really stress out uh, moving out to our new apartment and not so smooth change of jobs. Uh, suddenly, these two issues are not, still not over with and everything is still progressing slowly. Uh, slower than we hoped. Let alone that we still don't have proper internet. Uh, one of the short term goals for me is to pick up the grind again and do the thing that I really love and that is streaming uh, the shows that you come to love uh, and know in the past years. Jayco Life, Ramen Break and Gabber Disco Night Live. This year I really do plan uh, to bring back DJ shows uh, under the Soundwave Aesthetics name uh, which will be held uh, on a uh, or the other Tuesdays that are no shows. Uh, there is no date for it set yet, but I want to try to aim for May. Uh, next to a regular show, I want to pick up events again with nearly monthly base NDXJCL live stream events. The next part, upcoming live stream events uh, the coming months. Starting in February, uh, we will do uh, a Gabber Disco event called the uh, Disco uh, Discoversary. In celebration of five years Gabber Disco. In March uh, we will have two events. The first one will be Neo Dash's uh, Untitled Birthday Bash uh, 2023. With a few weeks after uh, our housewarming live stream party. Of course uh, for those interested in joining the housewarming party physically. Send me a DM. Um, this goes out to the community members that uh, wants to. Um, yeah. Uh, come to this house and have uh, a party send me a dm um, of course if i know you well enough you are <laughs> certainly invited uh let's see um and in april we will do the long-awaited jcl prime fall there are more events in the works but uh, more on that on a later date um yeah superhero jimmy we are doing soju <laughs> Uh, first of all, uh, a near monthly stream schedule sounds like another invitation for a burnout. Yes, but on the other hand, I really do need it because um, right now I am feeling really awful for not doing anything live streaming. I really need to get this energy back again. Uh, even though it took a lot of energy uh, for, uh, for the online events and the online shows, it also gave me back energy uh, also the thing is um, the more I learn to video edit the, the faster and handier I become with it um, compare oh, okay let's say with um, JCO Equinox is the first time that I heavily video edit and with uh, uh, JCO Summer Wave um, I think the edit times were halved because I already knew uh, how to edit. Um, the, the Gabber Disco, the, the discovery of uh, Disco Discoversary, uh, that is definitely in uh, in February, and the birthday bar, uh, um, the birthday bash is definitely in March. Um, there might be a slight change, but this is the aim that I have now. Uh, oh man, shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next two topics are uh, really. Um, um, in a transparent way, I uh, it's something that I do need to uh, address. Um, but it's also something that you uh, need to know, and um, yeah, you just need to know. Okay, Twitch subscriber, Patreon, tips and funds. What are the current goals? Uh, as I stated since I started streaming, I am not doing this for the money. Absolutely not. Uh, I do this because I uh, love all of this, uh, even if it costs me my health. <laughs> as most of you know. Um, uh, because of all of this, I got to learn new things. New skills uh, and people because of it. Uh, not only that, I got to learn uh, to uh, how to react, uh, how to uh, do a little bit more storytelling, um, uh, get to learn uh, how to 
think of questions, uh, talk about questions. Uh, for me, it's really therapeutic. Uh, uh, because of it, I got to uh, learn new things, skills, and, because, and people because of it. Um, even if I won't get any, any funds, funds, I see this therapeutic. Uh, therapeutic. Uh, even though uh, I say uh, I don't do it for the money, I also must confess that uh, your patronage, uh, patronage is certainly helping me out more than you can imagine. Um, uh, as I'm not able to uh, buy the upgrades with my regular income and with the, yeah, the prices that we need to pay here in the Netherlands. Um, uh, what I earn with streaming stays with streaming. And it definitely will not go wasted on private things. So 2020 to 2021, I have received so much that I was able to purchase a much needed up-to-date computer with an RTX 3080 and a 2K LG monitor. So once again, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, it definitely helped out a lot. Um, at the same time, I also decided that uh, that I'm paying Harley Dive for 50% of uh, for his services with every JCL events that he helped me out with. Um, and not must forget the crew that helped me out throughout the NDX JCL. Uh, I uh, give the crew, uh, I, I give the crew uh, t shirts as a thanks. Uh, Round Wave Crusher, no, it's definitely not wrong to earn money, but it's uh, something that I do need to address because I am. Really, really thankful. So, 2021 uh, to 2022, uh, the money was spent on several things. Uh, Twitch money was spent on uh, Harley services, uh, unmuted uh, cover cost, uh, unmuted artist t-shirts, uh, Jayco Life and the SJCL stickers, uh, several releases for the show, uh, prizes, gifts uh, for the community, uh, Assassin's Creed games for Kim as a big thank you uh, for always helping me out for the last <laughs> forever. Um, uh, and of course, the, the yearly crew t-shirts. Uh, Patreon money, on the other hand, uh, I was able to uh, buy a much needed NAS server uh, with a 2 times 60 terabyte space because... Yeah, even now I'm still using uh, my old hard drives from my last computer. Um, and I am still not able to install that shit because I'm still waiting for my internet, sadly. Um, uh, and last but not least, I also uh, bought a new mic arm, which is so much better than what I have. Than what I had. And also... A great headphone. Um, I already used this for interviews, and it's such an amazing product. So, yeah, to everybody, thank you very much for all your support in the last two and a half years. 2023 will have goals, of course, uh, such as Harley services, gifts uh, for the community, and whatever is needed for the shows. The next goals. Um, it's actually a freeway goal. Uh, with one of them uh, is an end game in mind, at least for now. Number one and two can be saved up at the same time. Uh, number three will be the next goal, but depending on situation of chances, this might get a priority. So the goal for 2023 is to, uh, to get goal one and two done by the end of the year. Um, if possible, of course. Uh, but 2024 will definitely be a real fact. So, goal number one, and that's helping out Harley. Because I feel so awful for not paying Harley uh, what he deserves, uh, I want to help him and fund a new uh, tablet for him as a huge thanks. Uh, a tablet for uh, an iPad tablet. Um, as you facts, um, I know that he is getting... Uh, more commissions since JCL, uh, but it's pretty limited as he can work uh, everywhere. By helping him out uh, with mobility, he can work anywhere, uh, if it's uh, even if it's for his own pleasure, or for commissions or for NDX JCL events. For me, uh, at this moment, this is the highest priority. Harley uh, has shown 
so much commitment and has made countless of hours for us. He deserves uh, much love. So um, uh, I have already spoken with Harley about this uh, last month. So he know about his plan and this is pretty much my number one priority that I want to give him this as a huge thanks. Goal number two. Uh, somebody, uh, as for somebody who is DJing solo, uh, my uh, Pioneer DG, uh, DG, uh, DDJRR is of course enough and is doing what it should do. But the downside of this is that I'm always bound to a computer or a laptop with record box installed. Uh, the other downside is that uh, I can never invite people to play uh, out of the blue uh, or if they want to do a back to back with me. Uh, for that to happen, I need to have a standalone DJ unit. Uh, I have been looking to models the last few months, and it uh, all comes down for me to a Pioneer controller in the future. Um, as I am also a Recordbox user. Of course, I've uh, also been looking uh, at a Denon DJ Prime, and also played on one. Uh, but uh, Denon's engine has its limit limitations for Recordbox users um and of course uh, pioneer sets are uh mostly used at clubs so for me it's the easier transition to go into uh, the pioneer controllers um uh, don't get me wrong uh, playing with the then dj prime i played on hex uh, set amazing product but um but yeah, it doesn't work with record box, and that, for me, that's like a huge setback. Um, uh, let's see. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, it's an over good controller as I play. In record, okay, this is what I said. But it's too much of a hassle just to play uh, with record box, uh, record box sets in tracks. Uh, while the ultimate goal is an XDJ uh, ZX because it's a four-channel mixer. I think that the XDJ RX2 is a more reasonable choice. Uh, it also depends what the new suitable controller will be when it comes out. Uh, for points 1 and 2, I want to set, uh, set up a goal bar somewhere. The most easy is probably uh, from Streamlabs, as you can saw in the past with an active goal bar. But I'm also open for other suggestions. So, uh, for... For me, definitely now, it's not a good time to buy controllers because prices are rising through the roof. Um, I am also going to fund uh, the, the controller myself because, of course, I, uh, I, I, want, I want to get that. I also want to pay a big part for myself. So, let's see. Then comes, okay, then comes point three, which is uh, considered for me the end game. Uh, at least uh, at uh, the end game, the the ultimate goal for at the moment. Every income uh, what comes in through Twitch uh, will mainly be spent uh, on commissions, DJ releases for the show, uh, giveaways for Twitch viewers, and some payments regarding streaming. What is left will be used for either point three or for future products. Patron income uh, is one um, is the no patron income is the one I oh, shit sorry need to move this around a little bit Jesus Christ uh shit where am I I lost it oh, yeah, okay patron income is um, the one I benefit the most of. And it makes it easier to save up as I can keep the money in there until I need it. Since August 2022, when I started Patreon, uh, I took out my uh, I took out money twice because saving up this way uh, has the most benefits for me compared with Twitch. Uh, it also uh, gives me a clear goal of give me a clear view to see my goal. Uh, where am I? Oh, yeah. uh, for what I had in mind for it. This brings us to point three. It was my original plan to use Patreon money to invest in buying more CD releases once or twice a year. Uh, of course, after I bought the, the needed upgrades. 
Uh, this was in my mind for the last two years. Uh, that would be my end game. Uh, but three months ago, th that was like the time that I went to uh, to Helsinki. So um, even Kim didn't uh, knew about it because I thought about it in the plane. So I talked to Terra with it, and when I came back home, I told Kim the idea. Um, let's see. Okay, then what was the end game? But three months ago, I thought of something else. Uh, what would be even better? If I would buy CDs, let's say 30 to 40 CDs each year, it will easily come down to six, seven hundred euro, including shipping. With bad luck, which I get quite often, there will be an additional import tax, uh, with uh, what will set me back around 100 to 150 euro. Um, uh, okay, either how, this is still the cheaper idea, but it's definitely not the most desirable as a big chunk is going into shipping, and in worst case also with import tax. So, uh, so I thought, uh, uh, what if I would spend a bit more and just go to Japan myself? It's definitely the more expensive option, but for NDXJCL probably the best option. It's a fact that if I would go to Japan, I would probably easily get 20 to 30 CDs gifted by the artists uh, as it happened in the past. This is also a great opportunity to rekindle with other older contacts, and meeting new contacts and maintaining them for future NDX JCL shows. If I would be going to Japan anyway, I might as well flock for JCore Live with interviews, parties, uh, Comic Cat M3 visits, uh, dinners, uh, as, as in more content for the show. Uh, let alone for me getting my name into J-Core Life, uh, no, let alone for me getting my name and J-Core Life uh, and the out there in Japan uh, by being there for DJ bookings. What if I can make yearly business trips to Japan uh, and get more out of it uh, instead of wasting my money on shipping and import tax? For me, this is going to be my current end game situation where I really want to work hard for. One day, this definitely will become reality. So for part three, uh, we have uh, no, so we have a part three same goal. Part one has the biggest priority because I want to pay Harley for what he deserves. Uh, hoping with a tablet, it can help him out, uh, able to do sketch stuff uh, when he's on the go. Part two can be saved up at the same time, uh, depending on the total income. This can be completed at the end of 2023 as is fastest, and otherwise halfway 2024. Um, uh, we're at least 2024 with its current speed. With uh, part three, the earliest will be April 2025 for M3 and otherwise Summer Coming Cat August 2025. Uh, these timelines are all set on the current speeds uh, on all sorts of income. Uh, for me, it's... Oh yeah, okay. For me, it's living that J. Life dream to have yearly business trips and maintaining contact with several different kind of artists in Japan. I see myself streaming for the com uh, for the coming several years anyway, so uh, I will work towards this end game. Uh, though the initial fact remains that I don't do it for the money. Uh, it is for you, the generous viewers and supporters of the NG and the SJCO collective that help my uh, that help makes my dreams come true. You all together make a huge difference in my life. Uh, and you also create a difference and speed uh, when to reach these goals. Yeah, as I mentioned before, thanks to all of you, I have received the much needed upgrade computer that I need, the much upgraded uh, monitor that uh, I can work with. Yeah, I am so really fucking thankful to all of you. But knowing that <laughs> I have uh, higher goals in mind. It's going to be a fact. Only, yeah, it uh, only depends uh, how fast the income comes. So, how is the breakdown of various incomes? This is definitely something uh, important to talk about. So, I always have been really pretty transparent regarding um, uh, what I do with the income uh, I'm getting from all of you. Because you all are spending your hard-earned money. So, it's fair to give you an insight of how the income comes in, how is it divided. 
There are four sorts of income that I have now. Twitch subs and bits. Uh, tipping, Spreadshirt uh, merchandise, and Patreon. So, Twitch is where the most people sub, resub, and gift on. We have an average of 60 to 65 subs. And gift the subs per month. I usually uh, will get around 80 to 86 dollars uh, per month out of it on average. Per sub, I will receive around $1.20. Uh, and even a bit less if it's a Twitch Prime subs uh, subscription. To put in a better breakdown, this channel uh, at this moment has 40 recurring subscribers and two actively recurring Prime subscribers. The rest are gifted subs. Bits are usually around zero to ten dollars per month, uh, with more, uh, with, with events more, of course. Per hundred bits, I think I receive around eighty cents for it. Okay, tipping. Uh, occurs every now and then and can never pinpoint on what the income will be. It can be zero euro for two months and on the other month if somebody feels generous enough and will tip 100 euro. Uh, for this service uh, though uh, through, well, for, uh, for this service through stream elements uh, I would get between 95 to 100 percent of the funds given. Uh, if it's a JCL event happening, all income so including tips uh, will be shared 50-50 between Harley and me. Um, yeah, as I said, this goes for Twitch income and tips. Uh, spreadshirt is something extra. Uh, sometimes there are merchandise sold, but it's not on a monthly basis. With this, uh, the deal is that the Korean artist will receive uh, 5 euro per sold item. Uh, in most cases, uh, it's either design of Harley or Tear. I myself keep 49 cents uh, for PayPal fees. Okay, Patreon is a place where the biggest chunk of the income comes in. Uh, with uh, 13 patrons. Uh, there are months uh, that tiers changes uh, to another tier. Uh, for an average of the last year. Uh, that will uh, come around 100 euro per month. Uh, at the rates, like, the rates of Patreon uh, I'm getting is uh, 85%. Of what the patrons pay. While it's way, as it's definitely not better than tipping, it's certainly a big difference compared to Twitch, where I get close to 33%. Um, as a Twitch affiliate, I am speaking uh, for all affiliates uh, that we don't uh, receive much of your hard earned funds that you spend on us. Uh, a lot of Twitch streamers have this problem, and it's also pretty hard for us to uh, openly talk about it. The thing is, uh, we are getting paid and we should be really happy about it. Don't get me wrong, I am really happy that I'm getting something out of it. Uh, but if we count the many hours that we stream, our hourly fee comes in as a shock. In my case, it will be $6 uh, per hour um, while streaming. And I'm not even counting the countless of hours that I spend preparing our stuff for the show. Uh, a huge sum of a, uh, a huge sum or decent wage for some countries, yes, but my hourly fee with my regular job is close to 12 euro per hour. Uh, there I do less, and I even get secondary <laughs> benefits like eight weeks off, paid uh, vacation money, uh, end of the year money. So those are the awesome benefits. Um, I, will speak, uh, I will be speaking for all others, uh, and not only for myself, that are streaming. If you want to support your favorite streamer financially, please consider other ways of payments that benefit you and the streamer, and not only the pocket of a corporate business, of the, uh, and not the pocket of a corporate business on the hard work of another. <laughs> so, Jesus. <laughs> so let's see um okay there are two more uh things that i want to mention that is uh, okay uh, what are the long-term goals as i mentioned before my end game is to have business trips to japan for bookings new cities for the shows and keep in touch with the j-core artists in japan j-core in general has evolved so much in the past years and the term also faded for most people 
Uh, it might change names in the future, but for me, it will always remain JCore. As for live streaming, I want to keep doing these uh, weekly shows for the next coming years. Uh, also want to do more live streaming events for the world. Um, with the business trips to Japan, it helps out as our bond will strengthen uh, with every visit. The other long-term goal is that we want to do more releases for uh, more releases from the current or last year. Instead of releases that we heard from the past, what we have been doing the last two years. Uh, what I'm aiming for mostly is to have more showcases of newer albums. Uh, we are uh, well on uh, uh, we are well on our way with Jayco Life, but it can be better. We are working on it. It's a long way. Um, it's a long way. Uh, there will be needed upgrades on. Huh? Okay, that's a weird sentence. So then, the last one is uh, when am I planning to stop? For now, if my health lets it, I want to continue this for the next 10 years. Uh, we surely love to celebrate uh, 20 years uh, Neo Dash Xerox in 2025, uh, 20 years Decima Sounds in 2028, and Neo Dash's uh, 50 max speed limit bash in 2023. But you never know where uh, life brings us. Uh, for now, I want to focus on the dreams uh, that I want to make reality of it. <laughs> so that was pretty much the uh, yeah the whole part that I do want to mention you people. <laughs> yes, I said the 50 max speed limit bash in the 2023. <laughs> Thanks, uh, anonymous, uh, for the gift of sub to a first. So, Jesus, man, that's I. I don't think that I have haven't talked so much for <laughs> for such a, a long time in one go. So man, um, yeah, I hope that the story what I told you is uh, clear and yeah, and you know what my goals are. Um, it's uh, a lot of streamers and a lot of people uh, they uh, tend to keep their. Uh, uh, their financial status is uh, more of a secret because uh, they're probably afraid that people will get jealous or they won't be called out. But for me, it's... Uh, you are the people that are uh, providing the funds. So, yes, I know I am not entitled... Uh, no, not entitled. Uh, I am not... Uh, Jesus... Um, that, uh, that I don't need to tell you where my funds is going uh, going to be spent on but for me it's fair enough because my whole personality is about transparency and it's about people need to know where they spend their money on <sighs> so now to the uh, to the best part of the show and that is the awesome questions that you people uh, have sent on Discord. So, the first one is from Def Minion. <laughs> so, um, I think I've got a fun question. You have been active as a DJ for some quite time. Throughout the years, you have done so many shows both uh, on and offline and have published a few mixtapes. There are also a handful of productions credited on your name. Now the question, what made you pursue a career in DJing and not producing? Ama, 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 yeah. So, okay, um, most of you uh, probably know that I was uh, producing music in the past. Uh, started making music in, uh, I had my first computer in 1996. I started with Magic Music Maker, making some beats, then switched over to Fruity Loops uh, after FL Studios. Um, so I did produce music back then, um, but the thing is, uh, up until a certain point, I started to 
uh, sent out demos to uh, certain people. But I never got uh, the feedback. Yeah, the only feedback that I hear, yeah, it's not good enough. And then I try to ask, yeah, but what's not good enough? Is there somebody I can change? I never receive uh, email anymore. Uh, I even sent to Paul Elstock. <laughs> like, why the hell would I do that? Uh, sent to DG Plague. Uh, also sent to Japan. Um, and that was so difficult. Uh, I never got the feedback that I uh, needed to receive. Um, I did join like some kind of uh, forum where you can uh, show your music to other people and other uh, producers. And yeah... Yeah, the, those are more unknown people and say, yeah, your track is awesome. And uh, yeah, they're really awesome. You, you need to make more. And I was like, yeah, but this is not the feedback that I really want to know. I want to know how to learn and how how, how am I able to release of a, get on that kind of level that I can get CD releases. Because yes, one of my dreams back then was to appear on Thunderdome. So... Uh, then I got to learn about DJ Plague, and to my surprise, uh, he told me that uh, he uh, he stopped making music for quite a long time already. Uh, even though there are music coming out of his name, out on out on his name. So I, um, me and Plague, we had such amazing uh, discussions with each other because even up up until now, I see him as my mentor. Uh, so, uh, what uh, made me pursue my career as DJing and not producing? As the famous words, uh, what DJ Plague said, why would I make music if there are better producers out there that I can use? Uh, and now I'm talking about DJ Mutante. Uh, DJ Mutante is one of the best French car producers out there. Uh, but not only music-wise, but... Technical wise, he's definitely one of the best in the scene. But his kind of music is not for partying, but it's more for listening pleasure. Uh, De Clumpy, as a mentor. So, uh, Plague, when he uh, has his gigs, he plays a lot of Mutante music. And the, the more uh, I think of it, and, and it's more like, yeah, why should I even try my best and make music if I can play music from other artists. Um, one of the other people that I looked up to back then was uh, Thrasher from Prospect. He's, the, he's the, um, the the label owner of Prospect and um, one of the um, early introducers of uh, Hardcore Drummer Bass to some of you people known as Crossbreed. And he started his career by only playing music from his release uh, from his label. He didn't make any music, yeah, maybe one or two, but he was only playing the music uh, from his artist. And he became so popular, uh, of course, now he's making his own music, but uh, more in collaboration. So I had these two people um, as, as a guideline, and both of them, they said the same thing. And yes, back then I also had contact with uh, Thrasher. Um, and he said exactly the same things. Oh, the Thrasher went to Argentina. Hey, awesome. Uh, I, I know that he went to Bogota uh, a few months ago. Uh, but Bogota is um, Colombia, I think. So, you, you know, if I hear... Uh, two of my uh, two of the people that I really look up to, and both of them they said the same thing, and that made me realize, yeah, you know, that that is the thing maybe I also need to pursue. So, uh, so yeah, that is uh, also for me uh, the reason. Uh, 2010 was the last time that I made a track. Uh, it was the best track that I made uh, with all the experience what I had. I even went to um, to a music school course for one whole year. And I learned uh, really a lot about music stuff, producing stuff. And I put in all my experiences in there. That's the best track that I have made. Uh, Def Minion. Uh, if you have This Is Terror, 15, is Torianse. 
That was my best track. So I sent in uh, Torianse to uh, several people. And once again, the only feedback what I got from those people, yeah, it's not good enough. Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's like, you know, fuck this. I'm stopping you know, with making music because I cannot get the, the feedback that I need. That I, yeah. You know, fuck it. I'm not going to do it anymore. So, um, because I was able to do a mix uh, for uh, for this is Terra 15. I uh, secretly sneaked in my own track in there. <laughs> so at least I have one original release on the CD. So yeah. <laughs> and even Plague uh, didn't give me an, uh, a feedback of the track. But I said, fuck it. I am going to do it anyway. <laughs> so the next question is from Hex Saxon. Uh, what's the funniest, worst, most outrageous thing that has happened to you while DJing? Something that you can laugh about it nowadays. <laughs> okay. There are, of course, uh, several things. Uh, the, one of the funniest things is, of course, in Japan. It's like I was playing speed core, Like, the fastest what I had in mind. <laughs> if I'm in my arsenal. And the next person played house. It's like, <laughs> what? <laughs> People, please tell me this before. <laughs> so th th that was uh, one of the funny moments. Uh, what was also really funny is my very first DJ booking uh, for CSR uh, Pink So Horror in 2010. <laughs> okay, back then in the past, I went to terror parties. It was such an amazing time. Uh, there were bass junkies over there, uh, people with dreads, and just people that just are there for their music. So... <laughs> I came to Pink So Horror. <laughs> okay, so the first... <laughs> The first person I see over there was a, a big bald guy with a white power logo tattooed on his arm. And I was like, okay. <laughs> I uh, I walked more into the, the room. And I saw uh, several people with um, a sweater with blood and honor on there. Uh, and in case you don't know what Blood and Honor is, uh, Blood and Honor uh, is a brand for these kind of people. <laughs> and I was like, okay. Okay, where am I uh, into? So I was there together with uh, three friends of mine. And me, including with two other people, we were colored. <laughs> and it was like... Yeah, okay. Okay, fine. So uh, later, uh, I don't think that we leave this place alive. Or we probably will see a burning cross out there. Uh, and then s eventually somebody came in with uh, with a Swahiska's uh, tattooed on his arm. And was like, okay, this is uh, going to be fun. So, okay, when, uh, when I went to the terror parties back then, I was used to people... Doing this and uh, screaming at people and just uh, yeah being one with everybody. I don't know what the fuck happened in the six years that I haven't been to terror parties. But they didn't do any hucking. Uh, like you know the, 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 the traditional Gabber dance. It was like they were jumping ropes. Without the ropes. Yeah, I'm going to show you. <laughs> it was not one person. It was not two. It was at least 20 that did that. And I was like... Banana, no. They didn't even did this. And I was like... What the fuck is this? Okay, so uh, Plague he told me to uh, to do the J core stuff because um, yeah I was the J core master. So I was playing J core. 
But the whole evening, people were screaming, Speedcore! 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 So people were playing Speedcore, people were just jumping ropes. Uh, then I came to play, I played Machina, I started uh, with Machina, uh, 175 BPM. The whole dance floor was dancing. Uh, even people with Swahiskas and <laughs> whatever, uh, those white power people. Uh, so they were dancing, uh, people were saying, speaker, speedcore. So eventually I uh, ramped up my speed to uh, 220 BPM. And that was apparently too fast for people. Uh, eventually I was at 300 BPM and people were like, where the fuck are they? They're asking for speed core and giving me a speed core. So at the same evening, <laughs> we have an awesome artist called Screamer Claus. <laughs> oh man, Screamer Claus. Okay, his the. Uh... <laughs> His outfit was, um, I, I, I think he wore like uh, like his boxer shorts, um, no shirt, uh, a paper bag on his head with uh, eyes cut out and blood over him. <laughs> and I was like, what the fuck is this? This is amazing. <laughs> and people were like, what the fuck is it? And people were leaving. And I was like, this shit is awesome. Holy shit. Um, uh, what else was there? Yeah, I, I think this is the most outrageous party that I've ever been to. It was like a whole evening of clusterfuck. And I was like, okay, I have seen everything. <laughs> so yeah, that is the, um, the most weird... <laughs> the most uh, funniest and the uh, most outrageous thing that I, that happened to me <laughs> while DJing. Um, um, maybe not even the worst. Uh, I also had one other booking um, for Hard Magni. Uh, at, at the moment, um, people didn't know me, which is fine. But uh, there were two rooms in there. But the thing is, they set me at the same time together with the headliner so eventually i only played for one person and that's the friend of mine that came with me the landlord <laughs> and i was like oh yeah okay you know what i just got to play oh sorry two people and the barman <laughs> and it's like eh, uh, uh, okay yeah then uh, so be it so i played for two people <laughs> and the other room there was like uh, five, six hundred. Um, let's see. Um, there was also uh, one really awesome booking what I had. That was together with Decima Sounds uh, at the Dutch convention. Uh, I don't know if Super Your Jimmy is here, um, but he should remember this. And uh, Cro not not Crobat, um, Real TDF should also know this. Um, yeah, um, hey, Josh, and I remember the story the, uh, that you told, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, with, uh, Deshima Sounds, um, I, I kept this, um, uh, live act as a secret from Jimmy, because back then, um, um, I had a little issue with Jimmy, uh, because we had, uh, like, uh, two different kind of views about how Deshima Sounds was going on, uh, should go. <laughs> So uh, back then I I was like yeah everything what I'm saying everything that I want to do yeah he's not going to approve anyway <laughs> so uh, I said yeah we're going to do a, a little act with a DJ <laughs> so in secret uh, we did a whole live act thing and that's uh, together with me Kim um. Uh, uh, our awesome DJ Kentai, uh, really awesome names from the past. Uh, and we did a live show, and Super Jimmy was on stage anyway, because said, yeah, you can better be here, just play along, because we're doing a live act. Uh, and we also had somebody uh, with, with a whole um, morph suit running around the stage. <laughs> uh, 
So I had that genius idea to buy a shit ton of whistles on AliExpress, <laughs> like 100 pieces of them, and just throw it into the stage. <laughs> so our live act was half an hour. It's also still on YouTube. Uh, we played all different kind of styles. It's a, a set track list. And I kid you not, for 20 minutes long, or 15 to 20 minutes long, people were non-stop whistling. <laughs> but for me, that was the moment like, oh man, this is, for me, this is a real live show. Um, I... Uh, I, for one, was never really, uh, really confident with having a microphone in my hand and just MC. And I did that because I studied, I know which tracks were coming, I pretty much uh, studied. <laughs> yeah, and like what Super Eurogym said, those whistles became a meme in the Dutch scene. So, so we did something good. <laughs> Even... The day until today, uh, if there is uh, a, con of a disco at a convention, people still call those discos Deshima sounds, even though we're not there. So it is good promotion what we did. Um, I know the Super, Super Your Jimmy didn't like the ID, but yeah, we were doing it anyway. So <laughs> yeah, eventually he did forgave me. <laughs> so yeah, that was um, uh, one of the funniest. Um, one of the most uh, proudest um, moments that I have was uh, also with Deshima Sounds, uh, and that is um, together with uh, Super Year Jimmy this year on VinCon. Um, it was his birthday because uh, usually those conventions uh, is on his birthday, um, and I told him, "Yeah, you know what? It's your birthday." Play the whole evening. I don't care. It's uh, he was playing so good music. I said, "Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, you play the whole four hour, four hours. I don't care. I'll just take the microphone and just uh, try to hype up the people." And to my surprise, J Cole Life have done so many good things. Oh yeah, oh yeah, true. <laughs> I forgot to load up. Uh, no, uh, I did load up my music, but it was on my... Oh yeah, that was... It. I load up my, uh, my memory stick. Uh, and I thought, yeah, uh, I, I can put the memory stick, put on my record box. But that shit didn't work. And I was like, uh, fucking hell. So, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, um, I forgot that. And I said, I, I do have some tracks, but it's not worthwhile because I need to search like the whole discovery of uh, I said, fuck it, you're going to play, I'll take the microphone. And I noticed at Jake or with Jake Live, I have gained so much confidence, uh, so much, um, so much experience that I took the microphone. I said, fuck it. And just uh, hype up the crowd, uh, sing along with some tracks. Um, yeah, just being, uh, uh, yeah. Like uh, an awesome uh, DJ unit, D uh, Jimmy was uh, DJing, but the bangers that Jimmy played, I was like, he only played the bangers from our time, the, the 80s, 90s, and I was like, oh man, so I was so excited, so hyped, and yeah, uh, suddenly it, it became all natural, also, also with a microphone, yeah, I... You know, with the whole streaming, I gain a lot of confidence. So that was definitely one of my proudest moments. Um, yeah, there are still so many different kind of parties that I can mention, but <laughs> there's way too many. Let's see. The next question is, uh, Jarson Luprin, describe every JCL DJ with, with one to five words, including me. Um... <laughs> Uh, we have around 70 to 80 artists. <laughs> As I mentioned, we had 165 different kind of mixes. <laughs> so we're, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> um, I will write them down uh, once I have time. Um, I will come back to you on another time. So the next question is, is from Kuro. Uh, I don't think Kuro is here. But his question is, when are you finally going to add uh, 7TV to the channel? Uh, 
So I know that he has been nagging me about 7TV for uh, one and a half years right now. So starting from today, uh, <laughs> like a few hours ago, I added 7TV uh, to the channel. Uh, don't know how it works yet, but it's over there. So uh, yeah, enjoy that. Uh, Death Minion 7TV is uh, like... Uh, Franker phases or like um, uh, what, is, what is the other one called? Better TV. So you have more emotes. Uh, let's see. Power to us asking when unmuted to. Okay. This is another thing. I uh, There is definitely going to be a unmuted too. Uh, only it's not going to be planned uh, in this year. It's, um, yeah, the, the reasons is you already heard, but, um, Jake Star was also uh, asking, honestly, would really like to know way in advance, uh, so you can see if he can attend. Um, there were five people, uh, that also upvoted that. So what I want to do is to plan unmuted, uh, either at, maybe at the end of the year, November or so. And otherwise, uh, next year in April 2024. Or May or June. Some, somewhere there. At least that there's enough time for people uh, willing to make the trip and save up. Uh, what I also had in mind is um, uh, some of the, uh, the mods already uh, know this. Because I uh, mentioned them the ID. But what I really would like to have is make uh, a little vacation with uh, the people. I found a place uh, five to six kilometers away from uh, the Villa Main, uh, where you can rent out uh, a house where 40 to 75 people can sleep. Um, there are uh, s uh, several rooms there that you can bunk with, uh, with a buddy. Uh, there is also a kitchen, uh, a big kitchen that everybody can use, uh, and there's also a, a communal, a communal area uh, where hundred people can sit down, party, and whatever. And it would be really, really, really fucking awesome uh, if we can have um, parties there, uh, get-togethers. Um, um, uh, I've been counting how much it would cost and um, if we do this for uh, five days four nights and five days uh, including five days uh, food so uh, with this is uh, uh, we have a catering coming in uh, it will cost around 200 to 250 euro per person for five days and that's with uh, with food and drinks so, it's way cheaper than hotel. So, this is definitely something that I uh, really want to do. I really want to plan. Um, yeah, and what I also really like with these nights, uh, every evening we put a DJ set over there. Uh, people can play, we live stream the whole event and do that. And then on the Saturday... Uh, we will rent out uh, a disco bus from the location to uh, to the venue. Uh, and there we do Unmuted. And then we have the disco bus back from Unmuted to the sleeping place. And Math Nerd, thank you very much for staying in today's <laughs> talk show. Uh, I hope it was really insightful for you. Um, yeah, I hope to see you soon. Stay safe, stay clean. The most of all, stay safe. <laughs> Bye, Math Nerd. So yeah, uh, this is uh, something that I have been thinking of since um, the, the week after Unmuted. Um, so yeah, it's going to be a little bit more planning, a little bit going to be more, uh, uh, yeah, a little bit more expensive for everyone. But I want everybody to have uh, a plan, like at least nine months ahead, that they know. Okay. This is uh, the this time area we can come. So it's something definitely on uh, the planning. Um, and there is also another planning. 
that uh, I have been also struggling with the ID. Uh, what if we can do unmuted free in Japan? Also, um, if we would go to Sapporo, uh, no problem. I have enough contacts uh, with Noteboot Records and uh, IOSIS, so they can definitely help me out with a location. But most people are uh, preferred to uh, most people prefer to go to Tokyo. Uh, but first, I need to have better contacts uh, with people that can help me out. Uh, right now, uh, I have uh, Yuki Omura that can help me out a little bit. But this is also another reason why I want to have a business trips to Japan uh, so we can maintain contacts with them uh, and so they can also help me out. So, yes, it's, uh, it's uh, expensive, uh, but it's something that I have been dreaming of already for a long long time but never could see this as something that can actually happen uh and now uh in the last few months i have such a clear goal what i want to uh, reach with ndxjcl and this is something that i want to work hard for it and this is something that i want for us uh to be able to uh to experience so yes, Unmuted 2 is already announced, uh, and Unmuted 3 is a big maybe. Uh, let's see. Um, Aversa was asking, what were your DJ inspirations when you started, and who are they now? So when I was a little kid, I was a huge fan of Charlie Lawrence Mental Tio, a huge fan of uh, Paul Elstock, huge fan of uh, the Party Animals, uh huge fan of dune um uh, there's really happy hardcore music um uh, two unlimited two brothers on the fourth floor uh 24 7 um yeah those kind of uh awesome your dance music and happy hardcore um so as for dj's Paul Sark and Charles Mentatio were my uh, heroes. But the more I went into the actual hardcore, um, I became more fan of uh, Neophyte, uh, fan of, state fan of uh, Paul Elstock, uh, definitely Lenny D, this American DJ. Uh, Rob G had awesome uh, mixes back then. Mm, so those were my inspiration. Oh! How can I forget? Rotterdam Terracore. So, um, these artists were my biggest inspirations. Like, wow. Oh. And, and I was like 12, 13 back then. And I really uh, wanted to be like them. So, um, as years passed by, uh, I bought my first uh c d dj dex from newmark in 2000 in the year 2000 i paid 1000 euro for it and that was like of my hard earned money i <laughs> i think i saved up for five months to be <laughs> able to buy that um uh, and i was like oh man i want to become a dj but sadly, my whole dream got shattered because people were saying, "Yeah, you're not uh, you're not a real DJ because you're not playing with vinyls." And I was like, "Nobody plays with CDs. You're a fake DJ." And I was like, "I bought the CDJs of uh, the, so uh, those CD players and the mixers. I think I only played one year with it. Not not even one year. Uh, I I think a total." If I say I played on those things for uh, 20 times, I think that is already quite much. And guess what happened in the laptop area when I played with controllers back in 2008? Even DJ Plague, who I looked up to and say, yeah, well, uh, people are playing with uh, controllers are not real DJs because you're playing with a computer anyway. <laughs> And everybody uh, were saying, yeah, uh, laptop plus play, uh, walk away, sing DJs, you are all fake. Uh, the, uh, uh, the real DJs play with CDJs. And I was like, I think I heard this story before. Uh, 
uh, uh, I'm not going to fall for this. So, I never stopped playing with uh, controllers. And up until the point to 2008 when I went to Japan, I was so fucking surprised to see that um, 75% of the artists over there are playing with a goddamn laptop and a controller. And some, somebody that I looked up to, DJ Sharpno, played with the same Hercules controller as I had. A small one. Um, uh, I gave mine away to uh, Ikha Hart because he's um, a big collector <laughs> of those. But for me, that was like, okay, you know, fuck those Dutch uh, people. I'll just play with controllers. So for so many years, I hear, yeah, you're a fake DJ not playing with controllers. Oh, well, guess what? The whole fucking world is now playing with controllers. And while the whole fucking world is playing with controllers, I started playing on CDJs. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Now, who did I look up to? Uh, at the first period, it was um, yeah, mostly Paul Stark because um, uh, he was like um, yeah, my biggest role model. Uh, then in the 2000s, um, I was a huge fan of uh, Mega Shira. Um, I was uh, also a huge fan of um, uh, of DJ Plague, uh, DJ Mutante, uh, the Speed Freak, um, uh, Complex, the Speed Corset. Uh, I also really loved uh, Frostbus. It was also Speed Core. Um, who did I looked up to? Yeah, Sharpno, of course, and Project Midi, Akira Death. Uh, and who do I look up to now? Okay, um, uh, who I uh, most look up to now are, <laughs> believe it or not, uh, the NDX JCL artists that are playing, um, that, yeah, that are playing for the events, but who I look up to even more uh, are the people that uh, never have gotten a chance to play uh, on the event. Uh, except for mine, like Banana. So, uh, uh, yeah, like Banana, he is uh, one of the people that I now look up to. I see that uh, he is growing. Okay, maybe it's thanks to me for giving him a chance, but it's also for me... Yeah, you know, w when I was young, uh, I was his age, I never got this chance, and now... Uh, I'm able to give him this chance so he can uh, grow in, in, into a better person than he already is. Um, who, uh, who do I also look up to? The people that uh, played at Anikura Unison. Uh, those are um, yeah, uh, the artists that, um, that defines NDXJCO as a collective. Uh, I look up to them really a lot. To the Neonya people I really look up to. Uh, Round Wave Crusher I have looked up to uh, since 2006. Uh, still, so am. Uh, every time if I go into his stream and I see him doing his thing, it's like, dude, amazing. You really deserve this shit. Um, on a professional uh, level base, uh, if I need to uh, find, of uh, um, say, the artists that I really look up to nowadays... It's DJ Mutante, because his music is technically perfect. Uh, the whole Gabber Disco crew, because they are making the music that hits uh, all my buttons. Amazing. Uh, Audio Freak, uh, it's definitely my number one artist. Um, because he is um, a person that... Uh, he does what uh, a lot of Western people doesn't do. Uh, here in the Netherlands uh, and in Germany, uh, you have one artist with s different kind of names for different kind of styles. Uh, Audio Freak, he makes hard style. He makes raw style. He makes uh, happy hardcore-ish. He makes uh, up-tempo. Under the same name. And uh, just like what the Japanese people always also do. And that is like, you know what? This 
this guy is really my role model. So I went to DEF CON this year, uh, and uh, there are a few artists that I was really looking forward to. Audio Freak was the number one person I looked up to and I really wanted to see. Oh my god, his mix was the best. The biggest problem with music nowadays is <laughs> you have an intro that is like 32 to 64 bars, then you have... 16 bars of kicks and then you have 32 to 64 bars of breakdown and then you have 16 bars of kicks and then you have like a, like another outro and that is like no you are dancing and then you are standing still for two minutes and then you're dancing for 10 seconds and you're standing still again it's like german highway you drive limited and then suddenly on a highway you need to drive for uh for five kilometers long on 80 kilometers per hour and then you have your unlimited speed again and then you come <laughs> it's like no and audio freak he played the right amount of music yes that's why the german highway that's a true story <laughs> so yeah i really love what audio freak is doing uh, yeah, uh, that is, uh, and who I also uh, look up to is uh, um, is the person behind Deadly Guns and uh, Warface, and that is uh, Triax. But uh, yeah, those tracks are really amazing, and I really love it. So yeah, uh, those are my inspirations for now. Uh, for the J Core scene, yeah, it's pretty hard who my inspirations are nowadays because uh, most of my inspirations don't make a lot of music nowadays but uh, like i said uh, the, the biggest uh, dj uh, inspiration i have is all the artists uh, under ndx jcl and if i see them spread out uh, also with anikura unison i was looking with full with pride like these people are representing NDXJCL the way how it should be. And this to the people out there, thank you very much. Uh, let's see. Then is CandyCore. Uh, what has been your favorite and least favorite JCL show that I have done? My favorite uh, JCL show is probably my first one. Uh, it's also my most emotional one because I broke down into tears when I uh, took out a CD uh, uh, with uh, a signature signed by Sharp No uh, with the text in there um, to the god of J-Core stay otaku speed vibe or uh, to the god of J-Core and the DJ Sharp No so the, the fact that he wrote that down for me uh, on the uh, on the CD that he has given me back, of a, that he gifted me in 2004, for me that was like the proudest moment that I had, and that was the moment that I said, "Man, I have come a long way with J-Core. and then with the first show, I finally did what I really needed to do. So that is definitely my favorite show. Uh, uh, what is also my other uh, favorite show is the LSG show, um, where with full of uh, pride that I can talk about j -Core. Uh I see myself in their magazine for the first time uh, yeah I even have a printed out version uh, in English because um, yeah, um, I cannot read Japanese but yeah um, a lot of style gabbers asked me uh, to uh, do an interview for them about j <laughs> So they asked me, yeah, do you know J-Core? The, with the A-Y, the cooler J-Core. And I was like, isn't that the same like the regular J-Core with the J in Stripe Core? Because that's a J-Core I know. So I gave them my view of, of my J-Core. So that was also one of my favorite shows. Let's see. Sloperij Janssen of Ik Ga Hard. You are transported back to a party happening in 1999 in the Netherlands. You arrive a minute after opening time, a minute before the party is over, you'll be transported back here. There are four areas you can go, 
But once you go to one of them, you can access uh, them to the other uh, for the whole night. Which area do you choose? Trans, hardcore, techno, or house? Hardcore, 100 fucking percent. Because 1999 was the best year for hardcore music. You had the most legendary parties back then. So yeah, hardcore all the way. Because the, the, for me, that was the best era of hardcore. <laughs> um, Melon uh, has the next question. I love the show uh, you did when you talked about the old days of DJing. Uh, how you got your first equipment. Uh, how you were shunned uh, because it wasn't... Uh, vinyl and stuff for other DJs were using. It's funny since it wasn't that long ago, but things have changed and has changed so much. Talk about the old days more. It doesn't have to be uh, about DJing. Uh, if you need this question in the format, name one random old fact or memory related to uh, to you that comes to mind when you think about the old days. Um, I really do like that idea. Uh, I can definitely try to. Um, to talk a little bit more about the past because yeah hashtag boomer baby hashtag boomer <laughs> let's see the next question is from suzabra uh what was one really amazing standout moment of crowd interaction as a dj that has struck with you and that you uh, remember fondly um uh there were uh let's see Three moments in my life, uh, no, sorry, four moments in my life uh, that really st uh, struck me with awe. The first one I already talked about, and that was uh, the Deshima Sounds um, uh, live act that's, that is on internet. Uh, the second one was my, uh, my DJ gig in Sapporo. Uh, so... I came there as uh, as somebody that they don't, they don't know. Only Rush Cats knew, knew me and Quill know, knew me. Um, but they came there and they partied as fuck. It was like... Really, it's so amazing to see the, the energy the Japanese people gave. So that really stayed in my mind. Uh, my... My very last uh, comrade, uh, Zer uh, Zerukazu... Oh no, my second last comrade, Zerukazu uh, gig, is together with uh, Rio TDF, uh, where we were headliners, uh, played one and a half hours of Russian hard bass-inspired music, uh, and also we had uh, a special appearance of Rush Sketch because uh, he was there uh, at, the, um, at the same moment, so I, I told Rush Sketch, uh, yeah, do you, you want to play like three tracks on the, on the show? And also, there was a showcase of Nihongo Hard Bass. <laughs> so, yeah, that was really such an amazing time. And the number four that is really recent, and that was Club Weep the first time. Um, Club Weep the second time was fun, definitely for sure. But the first time... It was so amazing to see the people that went to Unmuted. They were like in front of the DJ booth. Oren was keeping the DJ booth for not <laughs> coming towards us. Oh man. So these are definitely the four uh, most memorable moments in my DJ career. <laughs> yeah, Susan Bra, thank you very much for that really awesome uh, question. Um... Uh, no, oh, not Jutsu. What convention Decima Sounds or Rokuzu show live are the most memorable sets for you? Um, yeah, uh, those. Um, yeah, yeah those, <laughs> those are the most memorable uh, ones. Okay, Death Minion. Neo only fans and then six people, uh, five people reacting. <laughs> what the hell must I post on OnlyFans? My ass? I know that Kim wants to sell my ass sometimes. <laughs> hmm? Keep him out of it. <laughs> so, yeah, sorry if I don't read the chat that much <laughs> at the moment. Okay, uh, Holy 80 has uh, some questions. Okay, uh, you have done some amazing interviews with wonderful guests on JCL these last few years. Thanks, Neo. Uh, if you could interview any one person 
uh, or group of people for your next show, who would it be and why? Uh, ignoring any potential language barrier. Uh, the, the, the thing is, I really want to ask a lot of people, but I think the very first that come in mind is Sharpnell. Hey, good night, Ryu, TDF. Thank you for joining us. Jake alive. Stay safe, stay clean. As well, stay Jake. Yeah. So, Sharpno is definitely on top of my list. Um, next to that, I would really love to have M Project. Just, uh, and to talk about. Um, and of course, DJ Technorch. Because for me, these three people are. Uh, the biggest pioneer for the Japanese hardcore scene. So, yeah. Uh, those are the people that I really do uh, want to invite if there's no language barrier. So, question number two is in four parts. Uh, your country has now made it illegal to listen to J Cora. Uh, how would I react? Oh, it's ABC. A. Move to another country. If so, which? B. Start an underground J Cora scene. C. Try to find a replacement for J Corp. Become a peep kick only DJ streamer. Or D. Feel free to answer with your own solution. Um. Technically spoken, uh, Happy Hardcore was not really much of a popular music choice back in 2006. Because people were really disgusted of Happy Hardcore. <laughs> so I can sort of relate to that. Uh, with that I became... I, I came into the underground J-Core scene. Which was only <laughs> two people. <laughs> so I did start my own J-Core scene back then here in the Netherlands. Um, but I think that I will start an underground J-Core scene. <laughs> uh, and number three uh, you soon have reached three years of JCL what's your uh, drink of choice to celebrate uh, I think Spekuk liqueur um, I still have a non-open bottle uh, on top of the shelf uh, we'll open it soon but I think it's either that or maybe a good quality whiskey. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Next question from Banana. I want to add on this one the snack of choice for both me and Ayimi. Um, let's see. Uh, the anniversary is going to be in April. So the snack of choice will be either pork rinds because I'm addicted to pork rinds. Um, or uh, Ritter Sport chocolate with marzipan in there. Those are the my two weak spots. <laughs> um, or uh, Lay's Thai sweet chili. <laughs> Let's see. A uh, first all, uh, are there any long term goals for any XJCL that you can spill the beans on, like interviewing specific people, organizing a specific type of events, etc. Um. Yeah, I think I <laughs> I made my uh, IDs uh, pretty clearly. Uh, Mint, are you playing any games? Are you a gamer? Uh, not only PC console counts, but also tabletop card uh, of cards, pools, professional sports, LARPs, uh, creative scored yoga, etc. Uh, am I a gamer? Uh, yes, I always have uh, been a gamer uh, at heart. Um, but I know that uh, in the past, and Kim, uh, she told me this already several times, I never wanted to believe it. But in the last few years, I used gaming more as an escape tool. Uh, because life was shit. Um, of course, I had great times with Kim. But when Kim was not there, I was like... Uh, there was no parties, I, I didn't go out much, I only played games, and that was the only thing that I can find uh, comfort in. So, I use gaming as an escape device, uh, really up until, uh, when was it, 2018? So, later nog? 2019? I think 2019, or, 
or up until 2020 even. Yeah, she uh, came. Uh, she kept saying, yeah, "You're using this as escape tool uh, because I'm spending a lot of time on gaming and not being productive, uh, either gaming or shows." Um, so with JCore Live, um, it definitely took me out of gaming uh, because now I have a focus. I have a goal. Uh, um, for one, I am growing myself because I'm learning new skills, new, uh, yeah. That's the most important part, learning, uh, learning new skills. But I am also active for a community, uh, from a fan for fans. So because of this, I spend a lot of time in there. Also, sometimes on the neglect of uh, Kim. Sorry, Livia. <laughs> but um, yeah, because I was so heavily focused on um, that, yeah, I pretty much. Stop gaming for the last two and a half years on regular base. Um, of course, every now and then when I have a little break time from streaming, at least long uh, long ass streams, I play for one or two weeks uh, every day some games, and then afterwards I'm uh, going to uh, yeah start working again, start to grind. Uh, I do have my daily uh, free games what I have on here on my mobile phone. Uh, I start the day with AFK Arena, and then I switch over to uh, Contra Returns, and end with D4DJ, because uh, these are the only free games that I can play on a regular base at work and stuff. Um, other than that, I don't really game much. Yeah, and then the last few uh, months I did game a little bit more. Uh, as for tabletop games... Um, I am interested in learning how to play Dungeons and Dragons. Um, it seems cool, but uh, I don't have um, um, people around me that play uh, Dungeons and Dragons, so for me it's a little bit difficult. Um, um, yeah, other tabletop games don't really play that much. Cards. Um, no, also don't really play cards. Pool. Um, I did play pool in the past, but in the last few years, not really any pool anymore. Uh, professional sports. Um, up until last year, I, me and Kim, we did competitive dancing. So that was a sport. Uh, we even went to several finals in our class, uh, won some competitions. We have the, the trophies and the medals for that. Um, yeah, LARP. Um, never got into that. Creative score yoga, no. <laughs> Not any of that. So, let's see. Candy core. Uh, I, I would like to know how do you keep up with the bad boy persona in Decima Sounds knowing that Super Hero Jimmy is the original bad boy. Um... Yeah, you know, Super Your Jimmy, he is so... Uh... Oh yeah, shit, definitely. Yeah, I did Taekwondo in the past, and I, I was pretty good in it. Um, yeah. Um... Jimmy was the, the big bad boy because uh, he had a, a solely a different kind of view of Deshima Sounds. Uh, and I tried to keep my persona up because I said, no, uh, we need to do this uh, because it's the better better point of view because the people are shifting. Uh, we should uh, think of the new and go out with the old. Um, <laughs> and that kept uh, pretty long. Uh, but Jimmy also has like uh, some kind of humor that it's... Um, if you don't know Jimmy, it can be... Uh, offensive or really weird like what the fuck are you saying but the more that you know jimmy the the more you expect of him so yeah jimmy's the worst boy <laughs> um thumsy uh, this might be a bit of a tough uh, tough question especially since uh this comes to uh such a late notice but uh but from the top of your head what release uh, that you have showcased on jcl shows so far is your most favorite and why? 
I think... Uh, okay, there are three uh, releases uh, that stood up most for me. The first one is... Uh, Anime Gabait. Uh, no, the Sharpness Sound Collection. Uh, number one, because this is the, the first CD that I have uh, gotten from Sharp No, and that was also the um, uh, the CD that he signed, and that showed uh, that was uh, one of my favorites, definitely. Um, the next is the Lodi Star Gabbers uh, release, really awesome music. Uh, and the third one, uh, what really stood out uh, definitely most with me. Is uh, when Kenny Core gifted me the uh, one of the releases uh, a couple of months ago. Um, excess, uh, uh, what was it called? Excessive something again. Um, I, I forgot the name, but uh, excess energy. Yeah, thanks. That was definitely my most memorable uh, release because I really loved all the tracks on there that was like oh wow this is this shit is amazing uh, not only that that kenny core he gifted me um uh, the release but for me i i think that's also one of my favorite releases so yeah and then death minion there's the last uh, the last question ever met cyclone uh, what are your thoughts about those blood shows um I have seen Cyclone, definitely, but never had uh, any conversation with him. Uh, with uh, blood shows, yeah, I'm already used to CSR live shows where there is blood splattered everywhere. <laughs> blood bath, blood bath. So, yeah, I'm already used to it. Scream across, um, his whole body covered in, <laughs> in blood. So yeah, <laughs> I was already used to that. So yeah, um, these were the questions here on Discord. <laughs> hey, Thumbsy, welcome to Jake Alive, one only. Jake. Talk show here on Twitch. Yeah, it has been a really long show today. I have discussed so much. Um... Yeah, but the biggest is is uh, like uh, wh what is the future that we are going to? Um, yeah, for the people that has been here into the show, yeah, you know what my goals are. Um, <laughs> Death Minion, yeah. Last week I said that it wouldn't be as long, but seriously, uh, I started yesterday on typing some stuff. And I, I think I started typing stuff uh, at at five o'clock, and this <laughs> this uh, I, I kept typing until three o'clock this morning, and needed to go to uh, wake up at six. So yeah, uh, this is um, yeah. When something pops up in my head, that yeah, I try to find the best words for it and. Yeah, you know, all the stuff that I said today came out uh, from the heart, and it is something that I uh, need to get off my chest. Um, I will post uh, um, a short summary of the um, uh, of the future on Discord, definitely. Uh, maybe I can make a five minutes uh, video that I can post on YouTube and just uh, talk it through or maybe uh, yeah the sweet spot was 19 minutes so maybe I can do a 19 minute talk but it's uh, it's a future that is going to happen uh, the main question with this is more is when is it going to happen um, the earliest that is going uh, that the end goal uh, is going to happen is in 2025. That is the the earliest on current speeds. Uh, depending on the situations, uh, what is happening in the next uh, couple of months, years, whatever, um, 
everybody can help chip in and speed up the progress. So yeah. But still, for me, the main thing is, one, I'm not doing it for the money. because I'm doing this because I just love this whole thing. And two, whenever you are in a situation that you, uh, that you cannot miss money, please stop funding me. Please, uh, uh, please go to a lower tier or just stop funding in general. Because I prefer uh, that you keep your money, your hard-earned money that you receive. That you can pay your own bills, that you can buy yourself new things. For me, that is the most important thing. So, yeah, now that said, I think it's, <laughs> we are already pretty late. So, I think this is also a good moment um, to stop the stream. Hmm? All right. Oh yeah, I need to give Candy Core his uh, points back. So next week we will have uh, Kimbine again for you. Uh, they're clumpy. Oh wait, Def Media, maybe do a crowdfunding for Harley's tablet. Uh, tablet. Um, yes, uh, I like the idea of a crowdfunding, but um, which service should I use for that? Because, like I said, um, people that send money on Twitch, uh, I only receive 33% of it. So, the money that you spend on a streamer, the streamer only gets a little percentage of it. So, I prefer to find a place where, uh, where the money goes more to me and less to the, uh, to the business. So, uh, if you have suggestions, please DM me. Hey, Baskaru! Thank you very much for the 21 subscription. Woo! Let's see. Banana, New Dash, consider the money you earn for Twitch your own hard uh, earned money because that's what it is. It's For me, it's really difficult to accept that um, I am um, getting income for uh, for streaming. Uh, because I mentioned that the income for Twitch is more than four thousand uh, dollars, uh, and Twitch, oh no, not Twitch, and Patreon has uh, I think twenty five hundred euros. No, more, almost three thousand euros. So. And this is in the time span of uh, two and a half years. And I am, like I say, I am really, really thank uh, thankful of all the patronage. I know it's hard work, but yeah, like I said, I also have been transparent about where the funds went. Um, it doesn't go into silly things that I use for privately. No, it goes into streaming. It's for streaming because you people are funding this whole NDXJCL project. So for me, it's it's more than normal to stick the money back into this project. Yes, I bought new gear, but it's all upgrades. So yes, it's maybe my hard-earned money. Yes, I definitely spend a lot of time, but it's uh, without streaming and without you people, uh, yeah, I wasn't able to make these dreams come true. And because of the thanks and the help of everybody out there, yeah, you are making my life <laughs> the best one out there. Uh, you guys are, uh, or, or the tigger, the together in general, it doesn't matter if you spend 100 bits uh, per uh, year, or you spend 50 euro per month on something. Every little penny helps. And I appreciate every source of income that you are throwing at me. And yeah, I am just really thankful. Yes, um, I also must be honest. I did count <laughs> my hourly fee with uh, everything. If I count my Patreon and my 
Twitch together, then my uh, hourly fee would be 8 euro per hour. <laughs> and for Dutch standards, that is really low. <laughs> but you know what? I see this as uh, therapeutic. It helps. Uh, not only it helps me, I also help you people providing more content out there, more music, more events. The things that I loved in the past, I'm doing it for you people. And now with the, fu the, the future goal in mind, we will achieve that 100%. 100, 1000%. We are going that way. Well, yeah, it takes time. Let's see, and of course, I hope that um, yeah, you all will stick around up until a point that we can all party together at Unmuted Free in Japan. That would be so awesome, <laughs> holy shit. Okay, you know, uh, I have talked about setting goals, uh, of uh, like thinking goals. So one of my dreams back in uh, 2000 and for 2005 is to uh, that i am able to organize my own party in japan but because the goal was way too high it's something that i can never achieve and uh, no, uh, i was uh, 2004 i was 21 years old so that was something like this is out of reach i can never reach that but with this show uh, and uh, with three months ago that I had this in mind, I started thinking, oh my god, I, uh, if we keep on going on this way, uh, and on this level and on this speed, I am actually going to reach the, the dream goal of mine, and that is organizing a party in Japan, and having uh, a lot of people uh, coming over there. Wow, that was my biggest dream so far. My biggest, uh, my uh, okay, uh, my ultimate goal now, for now, is to have a party in Japan with NDXJCL people over there. Like unmuted, that was like already a huge thing for me. A Jacob party in the Netherlands with community people. For me, that was one of the best times of my life even though that i was working the whole night i couldn't enjoy the party but i see all those happy faces people were enjoying themselves uh people that only knew each other online they became friends on the dance floor and the and they stayed friends afterwards and for me that was like the ultimate pleasure it was like wow we have achieved this online people from all over the world so yeah it's a goal um a part in japan that is a, a bit higher on the goal but instead of uh, 20 years ago that the goal was uh let's see yeah that the goal was here this is the goal i think that we are now somewhere close in the line to towards here so the steps are Way smaller. Mm, let's see. Um, Holy 80. It goes both ways. JCL is such a wonderful community to be a part of. So yeah. You know. The JCL community. It's not a JCL community. With you fine people over there. <laughs> Neo. Quit dreaming. And go fucking do it. Yeah. Oh. Go fucking do it. Yeah. You know. Round Wave Crusher. <laughs> Uh, I also need to be uh, honest with you. I am pretty jealous of you. Um, because um, th that you mentioned that you are able uh, to stop your job and pursue your dreams. That was for me the moment say, the fuck? He is actually pursuing his dreams? And I was like, man, I'm so jealous of this guy. Okay. There are some other costs that is like way of price, like DJ Dex is like the hell. Like a CDJ is cost like three thousand euro for one unit, and here is like <laughs> way cheaper. And it's like okay, there are downsides of it, but 
the fact that you can stop working and just spend your time on streaming and on doing the things you love <laughs> i am really fucking jealous of it but you know what uh we live in different countries um um the, the uh, let's say 100 euros in argentina is a way different price than 100 euros here in the netherlands i know with 100 euros uh that is like one month of uh food that you can buy and here 100 euros is what i spend on gasoline two weeks so yeah and that's quite a lot <laughs> so yeah but Round Wave Crusher, I do see your words, Neo. Quit, uh, quit dreaming. Go fucking do it. This is the words that I am seeing, and that's the words that I will definitely keep in mind. Quit dreaming. Quit dreaming and go fucking do it. So, with this clear goal, what I have, and clear mind, we are going to do this. It will take a long time, but <laughs> we will do it. Let's see. Banana, I also want to thank you for uh, once more for consistently hosting J. Cole Live and all related shows. Really happy, uh, happy to be a part of. Also, be a part to be a person you apparently look up to. Uh, because I'll look to you as an organizer of so many great things. Um, yeah, also shout out to Banana. Um, I, I secretly have... Okay, uh, he, probably uh, don't know this yet but i am taking him under my wings sort of trying to push him uh push him to become a better person uh the thing is i see banana how i see myself in the past somebody that never really got the chances ne never got uh, the the needed kicks uh, in life and yeah i see so many so much potential in banana and it would be a waste for somebody like Banana to uh, to not grow. But it's also uh, the, towards everybody, especially on the community or outside the community. I have one, uh, one uh, big motto in life. And that is, if I book success anywhere, um, or I will make it big somewhere... I will bring the people along with me uh, that stick around with me. So if I book more success, the people that stick with me will also... Uh, I, I will also drag them with me. That is my biggest model in life because that is also one of the ways uh, people can, can grow. Um, uh, like apparently with uh, Dini Vibit, um, he did his online shows. But I saw on Twitter that he personally thanked me and Round Wave Crusher uh, that he was able to play at uh, our events. And I was like, oh man. You know, that really came in really hard and really deep for me. I am not used to uh, that people thank me for, for doing the things uh, for them. It's more like... Um, uh, I, I do things for people and people take me for granted. Uh, this uh, happened in the past way too many times. Uh, one of those things is the, the 30 year of trauma that I that my mother has placed upon me. Still working on it. Uh, it's way better than one and a half year ago. But I don't want to be uh, handled. On a way that I don't want to be handled. So. I want people to success. If I get success. I want other people to get the success with me. Because. J. Core Live and XJCL. Yes. It is my show. Yes. I am the one doing it. But no. Without uh, you people. This is not a successful stream. Or a successful thing. Yes, it's my thing, but I prefer to say it. It's our thing. <laughs> Sounds like uh, like a uh, like a commis, uh, 
communistic thing, but NDXJCL, it's a community thing. NDXJCL, it's built up by community members for community members. And that's why also on Discord, uh, I am not the ruler of it. Yes, it is my server, but if my mods like Banana uh, tells me uh, don't do that, sometimes I still do, but <laughs> but I do listen to my mods. If uh, two mods uh, are saying yeah, you, you really need to watch out for uh, for those uh, people, then I say okay, uh, I trust you to um, to make the right choices because it's not my server; it's our server. If you think that this is safe, go for it. So yeah, and this goes out to everybody. Um, yeah, you know, I might forget your names. I might forget your uh, online names. But the more I talk to you, also in real life, the more I get to know you, uh, the easier it, be, it will become. Fumsy Aerostom. I mean, it was a forgettable experience indeed. <laughs> it certainly was. Uh, let's see, at first, so I got surprisingly emotional, emotional listening to this. Yeah, you know, for me, this is also really emotional. Um, no, I'm not getting tears. Uh, um, because I'm not at that point, but it's more like... I am speaking this out of the heart. It's, yeah, yeah, uh, like I said a few times this show, I'm transparent in all the things I do. And... I believe in the good of people. I believe in um, in growth of everybody. I don't believe in a toxic community. I have been in several toxic communities within the JCore scene, <laughs> in real life, at work. So those are the things that I don't want to become and don't want to be a part of. Um, for me, it's really easy. If... Uh, if I get to know a toxic person, I will yeet that person out of my life as soon as possible. Okay, for one, well, for one person it's really difficult, but I'm working on it to make it better. <laughs> if you heard my story right, you know uh, who that is. But, um, yeah, I believe in positivity and positive things. Um, to build a great community, you need to have positive people in there. The only thing what I don't tolerate with NDXJCL is negativity. Uh, I don't tolerate uh, hostile, uh, hostile actions against one of our members. Um, I don't tolerate uh, discrimination. Absolutely not. Because in NDX JCL, everybody has to have a safe haven. Um, yes, I know that Tactis, uh, he uh, came to me one day um, and said something about uh, one of the NDX JCL uh, people that did um, the mix. He gave me a warning. Yes, I listened to the warning and I talked Tactis out of it. And I also uh, told Tactist, uh, this is a safe haven. Um, and Tactist um, has um, a grace, no? Um, I, I looked up into tech. So I also told uh, to, to tech, J just look how it is for now. Um, uh, if the person, of if we see this person uh, do something out of bound, we are going to eat him out uh, of the uh, whole server. Also told this to the to the mods. People were of the, the mods were aware. Nothing happened, so it's a good thing. Um, within the uh, in back into positivity uh, within the Jaker scene, there was one person that uh, came into the uh, the NDXJCL server uh, which I want to avoid as the plague um, this was uh, one of the uh, one of the people that 
um, that made me leave J Core. I am not going to mention who this person was, um, but I talked about it with uh, with the mods. Uh, they knew about it, um, um, and I said this person will never appear on our server, never appear on the show. Um, up until a certain point, that person came uh, into the server, and I was like, "Fucking hell!" You know, I need to. Uh, my policy is to bring positivity, and I was there like, positivity also changes with the person itself. So, uh, I need to become the better person and just accept that the person is in the the server, and. As long as the person is not out of bounds, there is nothing for me to uh, hold a grudge onto. So yeah, even I have a grudge on somebody, but that is because of some uh, some stuff that happened within the J Corp past. But for now, nothing happened. Positivity and safety is key. In, in the whole and the XJCL. Um, let's see. Neca, jealousy that drives your ambition is healthy. Um, up until a certain point. Uh, healthy jealousy drives motivation, inspiration, and that doesn't mean that you see uh, others as an enemy, but as a colleague, rival, and someone you respect. Uh, if we are still talking about Round Wave Crusher, yeah, there's definitely an artist that I uh, expect. Uh, respect really a lot but uh, also because i know that uh, round wave crusher wasn't the most uh, loved artist in the past uh, he got a lot of uh, shit talk uh, against him but round wave crusher always did his thing for the things he loved and yeah he just kept on going 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 kept the grind don't care about remarks and that is the thing that i do respect him Kenny Core, JCL in Japan or die trying, definitely. Uh, definitely. And, uh, and when you're when you need help, there's an entire community to back you up. So yeah, to the community, thank you very much for that. Let's see. Uh, round wave crusher. Let me say something from experience. The plans will never align for making everything for uh, for everything perfect. Don't count on external factors. Just trust yourself. Those are definitely good words. Thank you for that. First of all, it's very bizarre to think back to times before of these. Uh, I didn't have any online friends at all. And I didn't know a lot of people who listen to the same kind of weird music that I like. So there's a lot of uh, a lot to be thankful in JCL from Neo and the show and the community. Yeah, original uh, number four says two words to Round Wave Crusher. And I say to first of all, that's definitely... I, I'm happy that uh, NDX JCL is going the way how it should be. Let's see. Uh, I'm the man. I remember vaguely that I'm glad nothing bad happened that in the end positive. So what's the key factor of this uh, whole streaming career? Positivity. Okay. Now are we <laughs> going to end the show? So uh, to do a, a little sum up, you know the uh, the story, you know the the road that I am uh, working towards too. Um, yeah, hopefully with all your support, uh, we can reach the goal uh, by twenty twenty five. But uh, it's really really awesome times uh, that we're going into. Um, also, um, uh, not towards only to me, but also to other streamers. Uh, if you uh, support uh, a streamer, uh, please also look on other ways to support the streamer as Twitch isn't really the best place. Um, uh, it's not the, the most uh, best place to get uh, the best out of your money. Um, show next week on JCore Live. Um, Okay, I am planning to try to set the CDs up this weekend. So, uh, hopefully by next week I we will have a proper J uh, Jayco Live show again. Um, 
Let's see. At February, we have uh, the Disco Fursary Gamma Disco event. It's. Um, when was it again? 17 February? Let's see. It's. Oh, 18 February. Then in March, we definitely have for sure the uh, my 40 year birthday bash. Still need to ask artists to perform if they want to. Yeah, you all know Round Rift Crush is going to be there. <laughs> because uh, I cannot never uh, not include Round Rift Crush here. One of my favorite artists not to play in my event. So... Uh, <laughs> um, uh, there will be a housewarming uh, stream coming up. So if you're interested in coming into uh, the show... Uh, as a real life, you want to party with us, send me a DM, um, and um, yeah, and then we'll set a date. Um, let's see, then we have in April, uh, JCL uh, Prime Fall, and that's that are the plans for now. Um, yeah, this is pretty much it. It's a long ass stream. It has been a really long time uh, that uh, we stream for four whole hours. But yeah, it's something that I really do need to talk about. It was on my chest for the last three to four months. And yeah, the whole story is out now. So yeah, uh, if you haven't done so yet, come follow, like, subscribe at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube. If you want to buy merchandise, a spreadsheet. We have a Discord and a Patreon if you want to support me financially even more. Uh, thank you, Banana, for the socials and Discord for you lazy people out there. Just click on the link if you haven't done so yet. Um, also, definitely come to Discord where we have the, the most uh, actual... Um, Updates. <laughs> yeah, round wave crush here. Uh, we are definitely not alone. Well, it it definitely proves that we're definitely not alone. <laughs> J Core is life. So yeah, uh, come follow, like, subscribe. Uh, of course, you can uh, always uh, tag hashtag NDXJCL on Twitter. Uh, the more we uh, throw out the tags, the um, the more updates we get. Um, yeah, uh, no show tomorrow. Yeah. <sighs> okay, I promise you people, next week, <laughs> we don't talk this much. <laughs> Seriously, I was planning to do this like for two hours, two hours, 15 minutes. It eventually, it became four hours. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, uh, we are going to stream... Okay, I have a friend of mine streaming right now. Uh, this person is a colleague of mine um, and doing some kind of unpackage stream so we can um, raid this person or unless somebody else has uh, somebody that we can raid. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, round wave crush here. There's something I learned on these years of streaming. Never promise what's going to happen next stream. <laughs> uh, yeah, I have the problem <laughs> as well. But you know, uh, you need to keep the people uh, coming back. So you need to have like something over there. <laughs> so if we have somebody that, that we can raid please post on twitch and otherwise we're gonna raid my friend slash colleague so let's do a quick shout out to all you warriors out there uh holy 80 candy core original number four neka dj a first dj def minion 909 ik ga hard Derek clumpy that's white antique round wave crusher i'm the banana and of course, to all you lurkers out there, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you very much for all the support. Thank you very much for listening to the show. Thank you very much for, yeah, for making my life uh, definitely worth uh, working for. Um, Jake Alive has brought me the thing that I needed most in life. And that is 
um, facilitate uh, a show uh, for like-minded people like us and just provide content quality stuff for you people of course in the future uh i really want to do more vlogs in japan it's definitely a future thing it's going to happen because this is going to, yeah you know this is going to be a motto the future is happening doesn't matter how long it takes the fucking future is happening because jcore is live so everybody thank you very much for being here today thank you for listening to my yapping for a whole four hours stay safe stay clean and most of all stay everybody thank you very much and i can say this enough i love every one of you so much thank you for all the support see you next week Soldier game console oddly. Game core. Soldier Boy console is going to be garbage. But if it is the exact same as the previous console, then yeah, it's going to be garbage. At this point, I'm going to assume Soldier Boy is just trolling. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. Fuck. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. I'm so fresh you can suck my nuts. Oh, I see that my uh, colleague just uh, went offline. Somebody we can raid, and others we're gonna raid kitties. Hey, hey, yes, also, I love you, nerds. So, so, Not doing it today. It's the apologetic time, the apologetic time.